quite a bit, which is StarCraft 2 Balance. Yay, what everyone came here for, probably. Um, Are we gonna... Which is great. Are we taking bets on how long this segment's going to be? Is that we're like, we've been, we've been live for two hours right now. At least an hour. <laughs> we're actually running out of time, so we're going to have to do about like, seven you know. minutes. Uh, sorry, guys. All we right, really go. appreciate you hanging out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was one more thing I wanted to say, too, about the Stormgate stuff. But anyways, it did, you know, I'll just save it for a personal video. So we have our balance updates. Um, the meat and potatoes of the show, despite it already being two hours in. We got the patch goals listed, which I thought was very good of them to list their goals. Oh, someone, someone made me panic. I was going to get muted again. Um, but anyway, he got to the goals. And I think that was great of them to explain their goals. I disagreed with about half of them. And then we have the actual patches, which if you guys have looked over, you know what they are. If you haven't, kind of a general summary is that there's a couple of really huge things and a lot of tweaks. Uh, so they are trying to go a little bit crazier with the patches than some of the previous attempts. And right now, I honestly felt like the community was split when I was reading the 800 plus posts on the Reddit thread. And then someone posted all of our, um, the content creators, kind of like general content creators videos. And everyone actually started agreeing with me. So I feel very validated and happy that everyone knows that I am the best and I am always smart. But um, seriously, I actually do not know where the actual community stands. It feels like everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> people love it people are okay with it people like it people dislike it people fucking hate it people think that they're the, the balance council should be shot um people think that they should get millions of dollars like it just it seems to be everywhere honestly so um yeah uh but panelists you know take it away uh cats your first opinion about these balance patches uh i personally like it i i have a little bit of a bias in that i am in the in the in the balance discussions basically but uh but basically and they adopted some of the system that I wanted to, that I suggested they implement as far as like how they go about these patches. And, and I can't really speak to more detail because I'm on, I'm on NDA there, but um, basically the last few patches where everyone had Im was involved and everyone had a, a voice in the matter, it, it made it so that, um, so that it, it was very difficult for anyone to get through every filter to implement anything. And as a result, we got really shitty small patches in StarCraft 2. So, I think they've taken a, a different approach where everyone's voice still counts, but you know there are uh, representatives, and, and it's it's just a little it's just a little bit more fluid where where you can actually design a patch where you can state your goals. And as far as I'm concerned, as far as I, what I think is fine to say from my perspective, being on the inside uh, to some degree, is that the players, the pro players, like what 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 they're putting forth, or or they wouldn't have approved it basically, right? Because there's representatives for every race. Um, I personally do like the patch goals quite a bit, and uh, yeah, I have you know differing opinions from um, unit to unit, but 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 I think overall I, I like it a lot. Go down, uh, follow the follow the route, and go. I guess go to steadfast. Uh, I mean, yeah, if we're talking about the balance patch as a whole, I kind of have to echo Katz's sentiment. Uh, I'm really happy that they've they've made the uh, patch goals clear. Um, I mean, personally, like, obviously, we all cover a ton of StarCraft. We are all very strat. Like, we're here. We're talking about it. Um, we know that Protoss is struggling in the mid-game. We know that Ghosts are really strong in a lot of situations. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like the way that they've addressed things. I think there's a lot of changes, which is going to be weird, um, because it's going to be hard to tell where some of them are good. And some of them get drowned in the noise. Uh, for me, I mean, we're obviously going to dive, dive into it like as the first thing once we start breaking down individual, individual things. But the cyclone change, for example, is fucking nuts. Like, they're like literally putting a new unit into StarCraft 2 at this point. If all of these changes happen, it is a different, fundamentally different unit. They are taking out the cyclone and they're putting in cyclone 2.0 or cyclone point negative 2.0 like we don't know but it's it's neat at the very least yeah i i think i'm gonna go i i think this is gonna be a good discussion because i i am very much i think in the camp of I, now zg i haven't seen your entire video so but um i think i'm very much in, in in her camp where uh so first of all i want to say some things that are good right i agree with you all having explanation for the patch notes is fantastic like we didn't have that before now at least this gives us some insight into how things are working and and what they're going, even if we don't agree with all of it. 
But my problem with this patch, as we go into other things, I mean, yes, fix the Ravens. That's fantastic. Fix the Banelings. That's a big change. Everything is turning into the same unit. Like, we, it, it's mm. not quite that bad, but units are losing their identity. It's okay to have slow units. It's okay to have units that are based on positioning. It's okay to have units that only have a, a, a time in certain parts of the game. Everything doesn't, like, Cyclones are now supposed to be valid, viable, all parts of the game and kind of in a lot of game states. But now motherships have a, a greater viability. Like, it's okay mm. to have units that are only for a certain part of the game. And while we are having these changes that are getting made and they, they may make the uh, the meta better or they, they may make um, maybe the highest level, may, they may make it a little bit more balanced. And again, this is I'm going to fall into slippery slope fallacy a little bit here, but like at what, what point do we just start playing Marine versus Marine? Like it, it is OK mm -hmm. to have units that only do certain things, but they do them very well. And that's their identity. And between Broodlords getting faster, between Tempest getting much faster, the Mothership now is is not this, is just kind of this mid-game unit. Cyclones, uh, they're not defined by their lock-on, this anti, this thing that is explicitly for anti-armor anymore. Think now they're, they're just they're kind of the mech version of the Marine. Um, That's a good yes, way to put it. Uh, yes, we might have more units, uh, or more units might become viable. Fine. They don't have to be. That's kind of where I, I, I fall on this. I... RTS games are great because we have because units have identity and there's theming. It's not just about the the one v one balance. And I, I worry that these changes are taking us away from that I, on the <clears throat> altar of having like perfect fifty fifty balance. All right, so or having every unit be used. Uh, let me let me just get ready here. Um, no, I just want to kind of make it an overview. Um, I just do not agree with the units they have ch decided to change mm -hmm. drastically. Yeah. Um, I am 100% on board with you, Beowulf, as far as the identity problem. I feel like Cyclone had a strong identity and was perfectly fine. I do not mm -hmm. believe that it needed to be touched in any way, shape, or form. I also do not believe that now is a time to try and force Mech to work versus Protoss. It was a good attempt, especially with the expansions where you had new units and different economies and all that good stuff. It was a okay attempt when Blizzard was actively paying attention with consistent updates. And it's a terrible thing to do when we have neither one of those things and it's pointless i just don't understand what people's obsession is with seeing mech versus protoss i do not understand i think bio versus protoss is perfectly fun and i also don't think that brood war needs to have every single mech or bio work against every single race how many how many people are trying to shoehorn bio in a tvp in that freaking game so I, I, do not, I, I do not get this. I, I do not understand why they have focused on the Cyclone. Its place in the game was fine. Its uniqueness was fine. And it better have something unique with its fucking damage and its gun. Because it sure ain't unique in its goddamn squareness. It's a square box. It needs to be unique someplace else. And the lock-on was unique. And it just doesn't feel like the thing that we need to be paying attention to. You know, like the, the goals here, the goal of this patch, I think the community kind of expected almost entirely to be about helping Protoss because basically everyone has agreed at this point, besides the Protoss haters, the real, the real Protoss haters out there. You keep going, guys. But most everyone has agreed the Protoss need help and that there are some units that are too powerful. And what did we agree on? Basically, even though I don't really agree with the ghosts necessarily, we said ghosts and we said ravens. And maybe lurkers. Anyways. Banelings. And Banelings. People were very shocked and happy to see such a drastic change in the Banelings. Okay. That's where we should focus. Where the fuck did a Cyclone and a Mothership come in? Why are we redesigning <laughs> those units? And I like, actually do not understand. And talking about op optics here for a second, there are a couple changes that just that make Zergs happy that make no sense. Like, why are Vipers getting three extra trans or three extra consumes out of a hatch wait, or wait, wait, five wait, extra? Wait, wait, wait. No, that's a good change. Yeah, it's a great. That's change. a great no, change. No, I think that's actually so stupid. It, it's, it's, it's a brilliant Sorry, change, I think, from a design perspective. I think it's it's brilliant no. because it, it mostly affects noobs. And Serral's never yeah, gonna kill his building by by yeah. by. Yeah, but by like so, it, it's a very minimal yeah. change, but the optics are horrible. It doesn't matter about the that optics. Doesn't matter if people understand. No, 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 yeah, like we can't discuss optics. No, no, no! It's about, two hours it's about how about how optics good are the important. unit is. It's about how good the unit is already, and yeah, what its again, downside it, might be. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but Cell's never going to kill his hatchery from from it sucking it from. It doesn't matter. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that is the point. That is the point. Is that it actually helps onboarding players? It it actually helps noobs that actively kill their buildings. I think that that's your great. Point, your point is that it helps noobs who don't pay attention. The game is not designed around helping noobs pay attention. We can go ahead and let them have a problem when they have an extremely powerful unit who gets to consume to regain energy. We get to tell the noobs, hey, that's the downside, and you need to be careful. We don't need to then give consume, like, more benefits. Like, its benefit is that it's even possible in the first place. And its downside is that you might occasionally ju juice up on the wrong building, which mm -hmm. even the noobs pretty much know that they should be doing it on, like, evolution chambers and, 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 then, and gas extractors. I mean... And then realistically, do you see... I don't see noobs complaining about vipers killing their buildings occasionally. I see them complaining about Widowmines yeah. and disruptors. Well, maybe and, they don't make the vipers. You know, maybe carriers being too buildings. strong. That, because that's, it's, yeah, that's because the vipers thing. already the vipers already too hard to use for anyone below exactly, yeah. top so 50 why are we, GM. Why are we, why are we why are we targeting it then? Making it the vipers aren't hard to use like because they're killing your buildings. We're, 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 removing, because they're, you know, the we're removing one of the... vipers are hard to use because they kill hatcheries. Yeah, but why are we adding another layer of difficulty to them? Like why? Because that's, consume is so powerful. <laughs> like I understand but your perspective, but it but it doesn't actually affect the high level play. Like we never yeah. see vipers actually kill buildings at a high level. It's not in it's not like way, a balance issue. In that way, you're right. The, there's pretty oh, much yeah. no point to any of this. But that's kind of my point as well. Is that there's no point to any of this. So basically, our same like the same point, different outcome. There's no point mm -hmm. to doing any of this. You say it's fine to do. I say it's not fine to do. But our point is that there's mm -hmm. no difference in whether or not we do it or not. At a high level, I, mean, I don't think it makes a difference. At a low level, I think it's just a win. But I, yeah. I really do like the, the Behemoth pointed out that I've never once heard a noob complain about Viper energy drain. Be because because this, they this, literally don't nope, make them. Nope, they don't I, make them. I don't care. This goes back to my original point. What is the goal of this patch? Why did we choose the Cyclone and the Mothership? And why the Viper noob buff? That's not what people were complaining about. People complained I'm, far more about widow mines and disruptors. So why aren't we helping the noobs out there? Um, I think we are. I mean, I guess we I are helping are. them out with the widow mines a little bit a little because bit, now yeah. the, the line is thicker. Mm -hmm. But also they burrow faster yeah. with drilling claws, so like <laughs> you get that, half you get half of it. And that's kind of why I brought it up is still an issue because for some reason mm. widow mine got a buff in there. <laughs> I'm also yeah, confused that, by yeah. that one. That one's a weird. That, that one's a weird. Weird. Yeah, I think so. I, but it only affects like basically clam-like players, right? That are gonna evacuate with their widow mind. So it's just a slight buff at the high level. It's kind of the opposite of the viper. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's not like I wouldn't see it as these changes are where we should be focusing or not. It's the kind of thing that I think when something like this gets brought up and everyone looks at it, they're like, yeah, why not? Right? It doesn't really consume the the. The balance councils like hours thinking about whether the viper should everyone's just fine with it type thing yeah i think i think it's just a good change for the viper um but it does raise a really good point that like some things that did need to be addressed so i think i think you're um focusing on the minutia of this specific change uh but like i i agree with the concept of like hey they didn't address like for example obviously the disruptor besides just making it a little bit less convenient to build what I actually, so I actually misunderstood the patch notes at first because I thought they were making the disruptor more visually clear when it had fired a shot. So I thought they were actually changing the animation, which had me so fucking excited about the disruptor change. And nope. then I realized that's not what it was. And I, I kind of was like, Oh, okay. That was, yeah. Yeah. That was, that again, was interesting. I want to be clear again. I guess one 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 last thought on the vipers. I'm not talking about like the change doesn't matter. I think we're all, all on board there. What I'm saying is that we there's this perspective that protest needs help that Zerg is too strong. Why are we giving a, a buff that doesn't matter? And yes, this is pros doing it, whatever. But part of the thing to keep this game happy and healthy is making sure that it's community management. That that having a balance sure. patch is community management as it's much as it is making sure that we have a 50 50 odd win rate and the game's fun to play you, yeah. so again that the, the perception here is, is my issue more than any, anything uh which you know that's why yeah. we're that's why i'm fo that's why i'm focusing on this change because it's just 
it's a bad perception thing rather than right. an actual bad change one way or the other. And I think that that's where Blizzard was much better at communicating their ideas, whereas this is very raw, we are pro players designing, and here's the patch notes and make of it what you want, whereas Blizzard was a little bit more explicative as far as like their goals and a, and a little bit like kind of walking people by the hand about about things because yeah like they were a little bit more concerned with perception but we you know like we're this, these are people that are working for free to try to make the game better and i think they're damn good at it and and i think from reading the the reddit comments and whatnot like a lot of people kind of don't, like miss that these units don't exist in a vacuum right like they are actually mm. actively like interacting with each other and it makes huge differences. So people think like, oh, Protoss didn't get enough buffs, but Terran got a lot of nerfs that that deeply uh, informed the matchup. So it's kind of like the same thing. And, and maybe perceptually, it would have been better to to put more more power onto Protoss than 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 to nerf Terran in some areas. But it accomplishes the same goal effectively. Again, these are these are not necessarily like you know game designers that are that are thinking about perception as much as they're thinking about just making the best game that they can. I think they do good personally. Um. I yeah, good good point. Hmm. Go ahead, Sifas. <clears throat> uh, no, I was I was just gonna kind of echo the point that uh, I think it is if if it was literally like the previous patch where you know we had three or four changes and one of them was the Viper change and the other three were like very inconsequential, then I think it's a really valid point to be like, why the fuck are they changing this unit? Uh, but in this case, they are making a lot of change and they are addressing a lot of those issues. Some of the ones that you're talking about, like, and, and uh, so I'm kind of going to address your whole point here, ZG, as well. Um, some of the ones do feel like, why are they doing this? I get it. And I do actually agree the Cyclone, that is going to make things really weird because that's going to actually change like early game TVP a lot. Just because now Terran can't rely on Cyclones necessarily for oracles, or maybe they can, maybe they kill every oracle. We don't know. There's too many changes mm -hmm. to the unit. So it's it's a it's a very like the only one for me I actually really don't agree with in because of what you're saying and about Blizzard not like being quick, because we know this patch has been out for a long time or been in the works for a long time, is the cyclone. Because it's a fucking drastic change. It's, it's huge. massive. And it's very difficult to to interpret. Like that's my yeah. my qualm with it. It's like I need to play with it to know what it actually does or doesn't do. Like reading these notes, the cyclone is very difficult to make out. Oh, this is stronger. This is weaker. Where it's stronger, where it's weaker. Uh, like, and again, this is pros kind of writing it, which means a lot of the time I don't get the information to even compare it to. Like when it says like it, it's damage changed, I don't know what the damage output is in terms of DPS, right? Comparatively and stuff yeah. like that. Like you have to actually, like I'm sure Biomov can go and and do math, but I'm not gonna go look up the stats. <laughs> you know, like like Give from too a much from. Credit. <laughs> So, so yeah, I, I agree with you guys as far as the Cyclone being too convoluted of, of a unit to communicate outwards, but, you know, hopefully the balance um, test map helps there. May we, are we going over each change or? Um, no, we don't have to, but I think okay. like kind of we almost inevitably will. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I feel, yeah, I feel like we probably should. Um, yeah, I, like I guess. Before, before we do that, uh, I just want to speak once again to like the, the overall, I guess, point of the balance, the way I saw it anyways. Um, and, and I think they did a good job of like laying out the patch goals. I think a lot of the changes that we're seeing that aren't like, you know, big unit design changes, I think the, the little ones are really nice quality of life games. They make the game friendlier. That's like, I, I think like lowering the cost of upgrades across the board on the Spire and on the, uh, the Cybernetics Core. I think that's fucking great. Why does... Why mm -hmm. does level three cost 300, 300? Because fuck Zerg, I guess? Like, mm -hmm. uh, like, why, like why are we against things yeah. that are just small but good? And, and, and not, even, a lot of not even just that, on the point of upgrades, by the way, it's like they are actually buffing the upgrade that gets less usage than the cheapest yes. option. So it's, it's just good, right? It's like you still probably prefer in most cases, like if you look at, at a wide variety of situations, you still prefer the attack upgrades over the armor ones in most situations that they've, that they've uh, even things out, I guess. Yeah. So it's, it's just quality of life, like you said. It offers a, a choice that wasn't there before, and mm -hmm. it's nice. It's, it's just um. nice. That's the thing, is it's just nice. Like, I just... And, like, let's say you take that extra 150 minerals, 150 gas uh, that you save as Zerg, and you buy yourself a shitty new bargain, uh, bargain bin investor. And, you know, now you can lock down uh, some units that you couldn't before. But yeah, I say, that's that's my whole thing. That, that was a little joke at the end. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I like the I like the changes that are just make the game friendlier. 
Okay, so the goals of the patch, let's uh, talk about those. Make Protoss more stable on a professional level. Versus Raven pushes in the early game, more able to fight Terran mid-game armies without solely relying on disruptors. Can I get uh, just a quick check? Everyone agrees that's a good idea, right? Yeah, nod, thumbs up, said fast, mm -hmm. nods, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Increase the variety in mid-game and late-game army compositions by reducing the strength of mass ghosts, banelings, and disruptors. Thumbs up? Yep. Thumbs up? Yep. Okay. Fucking awesome. Make over-specialized units, cyclones, mothership, and infestors viable throughout more stage of the game. This is where I give a thumbs down. Yeah, agreed. Um, I like oh, sorry, go on. the first part of the sentence, make over-specialized units mm -hmm. viable. I do not agree with the units that they have chosen in their examples. Mm. And I think, I'm going to go one step further, ZG. I think it's okay to have specialized units that are only viable in certain games or only certain game states. Yes, I also do absolutely agree with that. I actually was discussing on my Discord, and I don't remember exactly when this was, but I keenly remember on a time in which the community and Blizzard, so it may have been at a summit, wanted the Reaper to be more viable throughout the mid game. Uh, that's always I been a thing. People remember. Yeah. People okay, so want a late game. No, people still want a late game Reaper upgrade. Yeah. They're like, how yeah. can we add Reapers to late game units? And it's like, dog, they're like one of the most versatile units in the game. Like, they're fucking fine. Leave them alone. Yes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh so I you know that this this for me the cyclone particularly harkens back to that but even the infester I've never really thought of the infester as something that was um over specialized. I think that there are some zerg players who don't use them as much but they might just Which be wrong. Fine. Like we that should they that should be thing like I I love a game when I can look at it without the name nameplates and say yeah this is Rainer there are no infestors <laughs> or yeah this is Sarah look at all the bird infestors everywhere. Like or dark, that is yeah, something that dark, differentiates dark, doing players. This Dark's yeah. been doing this like two infester play to yeah. kill, and and the it kind of fucking sucks because like literally something that has been this like little unique flavor that they're talking about, they actually do address that specifically, and they're like, well, we don't want uh, infestors to two shot you know sixteen marines in a medevac anymore, and it's like, oh, but like I, okay, fair, <laughs> but like that was like such a cool little invention he came up with, mm. yeah um so anyways just you know let's keep going on the goals bring more visual clarity to important units on the matchup such as relative abilities like what am i targeting i think we all that's a pretty that's so good okay i saw uh, this and it actually <laughs> made me so excited ah but we'll see what they actually did and maybe less excited <laughs> yeah promote more interaction in late game scenarios by making the units such as tempest mothership and brewlord more maneuverable specifically the whole sentence i i am i love the Damn. first half and I'm gonna carp up, I'm gonna pull my identity card and say not every unit has to be maneuverable. So I'm like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I think yeah, I think those yeah. Okay. Um. So we're kind of clear. I, I, yeah. yeah. We're, but, we're kind but we of can on the dive same deeper boat. into it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're yeah, kind yeah, of the same boat as far unit. as the yeah. goals. Um. Let's get into the Terran. So the Cyclone, which you've already discussed, you know, already quite a bit. But uh, my opinion, I think it's already unique unit that does have i suppose a specialized role but in every single matchup so i think that's totally fine and i don't think it needs to be the target of a change especially at a time period in which immediate uh fixes are not available so if you're going to risk changing a unit drastically it should be a unit that really does need to be changed and the cyclone is not it that's my deal here i think I like. a valid response to that is maybe the cyclone needs to not be changed is the other thing because how much, how much is this going to shatter certain openings? Like, like I'm saying, like cyclones are a really fundamental. Now I, I I'm there, right now. There's two wolves inside of me. There's the one that's like, yeah, yeah, balance, like make sure it's good. Um, and then there's the other part that's like, no, we want fucking new shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get everything exciting. <laughs> um, so for example, and we don't uh, like, I don't want to hog the mic too much. Um, but like this might make cloak banshees much better than they used to be. In TBT, maybe it will. Maybe it won't. We don't know. This might make, uh, you know, certain Stargate openers better. In PVT, we don't know. But to draw it back and go to the other wolf is, like, we might need to tweak this, like, six times before we actually do anything. But at the same time, we do have to remember, this is a balanced test mod. This is not, this is not a live version of the game. Yeah. 
I, I yeah, I think I agree, and I think you guys are mostly in agreement here, right? And in, in terms of just um, the cyclone, it's such again. I, I'm repeating myself from earlier, but it's such a big change that it's very dif difficult to judge, and that's where it's just kind of a, a a leap of faith, and we have to test it and see in the test months. But I share Jess's concerns as far as like, can we actually fix it if it goes live and it's broken? And we're not going to be able to, in a test mode, evaluate all of those different situations. This is something that Blizzard, especially towards the tail end, had to be very careful with. And that is why we got kind of like the 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 Bland. poopy cloud, yeah, the, the, like the, the investor cloud, right now, yeah, very real back to say like, let's just make sure that we're not breaking anything with this, but we need mm. something to re to replace infested terrains type thing. That was the discussion, which I was never a fan of because I'd mm. rather you know like have something that I, that is actually impactful and. From that perspective, the cyclone is exciting, but it is, you know, given the state of things and how fast we can implement things, it is definitely, and it should be a, a concern um, moving forward. I also think, just to linger on the cyclone final final word, uh, the upgrade, is it 5.1 movement speed? That's fucking insane. That's it's so fast. fast. <laughs> like, that's like, like that's the, fucking that's nuts. absolutely yeah. ridiculous, yeah. <laughs> like, I that don't is... know how to judge the other numbers, but my God, like, that's, yeah. Yeah. That is, that is fucking nuts. Yeah. Um, I just want to piggyback just real quick on what you said uh, in regards to the changes, because the other thing that in regards to not just the balance, but mechanically, if we change lock on the way that they're talking about right now, is that going to be too complicated for the actual like game engine? Like is the lock, is the cyclone just going to break? Like, is it just going to fundamentally break? Because like, obviously we're, you know, we're in the balance test mode, but like, fucking around with shit that's already kind of delicate or like acts uniquely is that going to break the game in such a fundamental way that we can't play it anymore yeah uh for example shield batteries can't be canceled right now <laughs> or uh, or <laughs> or told what to or told what to heal or uh told what to oh, heal yeah. not on the base hotkey uh, and yeah. this has literally already affected a professional match with money yeah. on the line fortunately both mm. players were already eliminated spoiler for masters coliseum 6 damn but, we're testing that tonight yeah. Spoiler. I <laughs> uh, just mute me for a second. Uh, so Trigger and Showtime played a match, and Trigger Showtime he had already he already like adjusted for, for, to it. So like good for him for labbing. I guess that's his advantage. Uh, he built a pylon to block adepts from running in. Trigger built a shield battery because it, it's BB on default hockey, so it's just quicker. Uh, and he was more, like more HP, more effective HP as well. Uh, that yeah. too, yeah. And it built it builds slower, right? So it's longer to cancel. So yeah, there's like a lot of reasons. seconds versus 15, I think. Uh, there's a lot but of reasons. 18. There's a lot of reasons. Um, it doesn't matter. Either way, he goes to build it, and he pauses the game at like three and a half minutes, and he's like, I can't cancel my shield battery. And everyone's just like, yeah. And he's like, what? And they're like, yeah, the game's broken. And it's, <laughs> this is a 40 fucking thousand dollar tournament. And like, <laughs> like granted, yeah. they were both already eliminated. It, it, it didn't affect too much. And I don't think... It, like, I, wow, maybe at that point, there might have been an opportunity for Trigger to still, snow, like, jump him. But, like, that's a, that's a problem. That's a big problem. Uh, you're absolutely right. Sorry, I thought I was going to pick up on that. Because it, it also <laughs> even further highlights how much of a unique unit it already is. If we're concerned about having such a unique, specialized attack that it could further break a game that is already vulnerable to breaking, that further is evidence that it's already a unique unit. Um, and making it again more homogenous is just, I think, not necessary. Um, in every sense of the word, I feel like this is unnecessary stuff. Why are we looking at the cyclone? And apparently, some of the cyclone is to increase the viability of mech based gameplay against Protoss. It could just, be really fun. It could backfire. If mech yeah, it did work, that would be awesome. If you, Thermal, found the silver bullet, <laughs> he's the one who did this everyone bows down to you thermal afterwards right like oh you made mech viable oh my god so fucking unlikely to happen 13 years two different expansions much more hands-on and more uh options to make it work such as you know new models new artists stuff like that we never could make it work now we choose to mind-boggling I mean, mind-boggling look, look, look zg in fairness there are like five games where ty made it work before he went off to military and then like maybe one game where special did afterwards no so... he, he did one he did one recently didn't he 
I, Didn't TY literally just use it in GSL after coming back? He did. I know you're right. I think he yes, yes, yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a 50 minute game or some shit. Yeah. Okay. So and, 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 I'm sorry. Anything, that six was just games a that TY made it work. Like <laughs> that clearly. was just a testament to how bad of a map Neo Humanity is. Like that was just. <laughs> Yeah, that maybe was just, that was more the issue. <laughs> yeah. Although, in fairness, also, like, I, again, I'm going to go, I keep going back to this. It's okay that there are styles that show up once in a blue moon and work and are super cool that you don't see all the time. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. That's good. That's yeah. stylistic. That makes us care about the players more because they're doing cool shit that yeah. we don't see all that often. Yep. Yeah, just not like, an issue. Not not an issue. Yeah. When I when I think of things that the patch that people should be doing, making the patch, or you know, they should be basically responding to the long cries of the community. If they're responding to the short cries, like every month that the, the community has a new cry, that's a different issue. But we're one fortunate thing about the way we're doing things nowadays is that it's like a year. It's a year for people to really look at and really give second and third and fourth and fifth chances to such things as Protoss winning championships. And when they don't do it, the community says, These are our issues. I think mm -hmm. the balance council does have to make their goals to address those issues. And then of course, whatever they see um, as important because they are the better players in this game. Sure. But you cannot convince me that the Terrans you, you united to say that mech need to be viable in TVP. And I, and you can't convince me because I know it's not true. The community ever wanted this really, really strongly. Um, yeah. I think it's just balance test mode. I think, I, I think we're mostly in agreement. I think we're all, like thinking the cyclone changes are so much it could break things it's very risky mm. we don't have the 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 manpower to potentially like change things on the fly yeah um and i think both jess and biomov perhaps more vividly are worried about uh, homogeneity right and and how oh yeah um like standardizing things to some degree because biomov is right the cyclone is more like a mech marine now and uh and yeah i mean i agree from the, from a design perspective it it it, it trends towards being a little bit more bland but i think that's where i and steadfast are a little bit hopeful that maybe you know the the cyclone can bring in new stuff and new stuff mm. to do because because that shit is exciting too so yeah i i say just see it you know let him cook see, see how it plays uh, out in the choose another mod. unit that's what i'm gonna end that with choose another unit speaking of other units mm. the ghost the ghost which, if they change the ghost drastically again, I would at least understand where they're coming from. They didn't change them Please. drastically. They just changed numbers. Snipe damage reduced and EMP radius reduced, which... Big fan. Big fan. Man, yeah. I can't wait to save 25 minerals on the ultras I still won't build. I do. I will get to that. That's a lovely oh. one. <laughs> Initially, I was like, no, of ultra... Bo oh, it's 25 minerals. Okay, I can't. It's literally one <laughs> zergling. It's one. It makes a difference. Yeah, one. Half of an egg. Um, yeah. Anyway, but the ghost getting nerfed, I think, you know, generally the community would, would th this was a goal. Um, and even though I do not find the ghost to be as problematic as much of the community, I will 100%, you know, um, say that I acknowledge their problems. And according to my own theory, just 20 seconds ago, they should be paying attention to a community's long cries. And there's been a long cry for the ghost. So... Mm. Sure. I, I am a little scared that uh you know this this can increase the problematic uh protoss psi storm like all in that occasionally mm. we do see because we are kind of making um it, protoss are making moves again because they are in desperate scenarios to really try and freshen up their pvt which is fantastic on one hand and sad on another hand um because they are doing so <laughs> poor <laughs> but you know one thing I, I have seen far more are storm openers and they have I'm been about as effective as i recall them being so Hero had a couple good games, but yeah, no. Um, yeah, Hero's gotten really good at writing with his left hand ever since we cut his right hand off. Exactly. Yes. That, yeah. Look, they, they had the. <laughs> by the way, the. I guess we'll talk about this when we go to the Protoss side, but like the glaring change that we don't see is an additional range on Extended Thermal Lance Colossus. Like, we've tested that and it was good. That is funny. That is funny. And now it's not in this. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think we're kind of in agreement that Ghost being touched and, and nerfed is okay. No one's really gonna, yeah. Fight no, over I mean, that. I, totally yeah. it honestly is really good that, um, y like ultras. Maybe they will actually genuinely become a little bit more viable now. Okay. Like maybe, maybe you know, when the Terrans, if you catch the Terran transitioning, they build their first four ghosts off of their like four tech lab barracks. Maybe now like a three or four ultralisk timing or a five ultralisk timing with like two two and chitinous plating. Maybe that specific thing might catch a transitioning Terran before they go to a 45 minute game on Gresvon and Dark wins the game. Oh, he neural parasites the Thors. It's been years and 150,000 resources lost and it happens again. Um, 
yeah, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's a good change. I love yeah. every one of us here, but for the sake of the show, I think we're going to have to cut out extended analogies that last more than 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> for, uh, because, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, the goals, just quickly to summarize, I think from a balanced perspective, it's perfect. Like you said, Jess, it's listening to a community, but also to pro player feedback and how they feel about the unit. And then um, I, I, the one qualm and i'm not even sure if it's correct is that both unit though both abilities kind of overlap so it gives the ghost more of an identity on that front but also its two abilities are kind of like you know anti psionic so like yeah it's, it's yeah. whatever it is i i like it overall yeah and i'm gonna nerf myself i can't rant for more than 20 seconds about any particular thing so just trying to fit all of this in to something more like 45 minutes instead of two hours um Impossible. so what am i Widow Mine was a target. They wanted something to be um, more visible. And I think we all agreed on that goal. And then they didn't just make it more visible. They also buffed it, which is weird. Uh, Drilling Claws now also makes the Widow Mine burrow, unburrow twice as fast. And the targeting line is also not more visible. Yay, on that last one. But the first one's kind of weird. I understand their point. I actually completely... I, I can visualize the scenario that they're talking about and how often people do not manage their Widow Mines. Um, anyway, I think when this was first introduced, especially since people were so used to tank hopping, widow mines were like, were used more like a tank. They were very much more so like a slower pace, really siege chop them forward, make sure they're spread out, make sure your bio army is not going to get friendly fired. And then they got faster and then they got faster and then they got faster. And now they're all about speed and helping the bio with the speed so that you plant them and it's working. It doesn't work. You're out of there. And they want to make it so that there's a little more, um, micro involved versus zerg with widow mines as opposed to you know a fight's gonna happen burrow pop run uh but i just don't think that the widow mines need a buff for pros yeah, or yeah for no noobs. they don't we see them almost every game in tvz anyways uh, uh, yeah i would like to remind you that um seven of the eight gsl semifinalists of the last two seasons have uh they've not been zerg and they haven't been brodos <laughs> Yeah. Saying. Well, um, I don't. I don't even so, think it's that. It's it's what does the drilling claws widow mine do really well against mutiling bane? What do we see the least of in ZBT? Mutiling fucking bane. Can we can we do something to maybe bring that back instead? What is the best and composition? Then we can talk about ZBT. busting the widow mine or uh, buffing the widow mine. Sorry, go on. But what is the best composition to watch in ZBT? Mutiling bane versus yeah bio mine. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think this affects a very small percentage of the population like that can actively like kind of like just babysit their minds and stuff like that. I, I, I will say like perceptually, to agree with all of you, like it's been a loss because the community sees Widow Mine buff and it, realistically, it doesn't buff the Widow Mine in the areas where the Widow Mine tends to be most problematic, like with Widow Mine drops and stuff like that. Not nearly, like it's pretty irrelevant. No one gets drilling claws for those. And if you do, whatever, like you, you could, you're just fine without them. It's just literally TVC, and yeah, I think it's a little bit of an overreaction, but I would agree with you guys, um, like from the community, I mean, but I would agree with you guys. It's, you know, unnecessary, yeah. I really, you know, I, I think it might help out the casuals, but I don't think so. Casuals are the most likely people to abandon ship on the Widow Mines once they're borrowed. Um, and I think as far as the skill ceiling we see from today's Terrans on twice as fast on Burrow is actually kind of scary to think about yeah, the potential there. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we'll see. It just is, you know, they, they did not list their goal into making the Widow Mine in any way, shape, or form better. They said that it was going to be more visible, which is kind of like a pseudo nerf. Mm. And then they, 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 you know, they, they buffed it. So a question mark on that one. Um, Medivac speed upgrade a place with Caduceus reactor. I found this funny because I feel like it was only a couple of days ago that I started. I went on my rant about the Medivac upgrade and how it's gone through so many changes. And at one point, we had different colored beams that were super overpowered. But anyway, speed upgrade a place with Caduceus reactor. Increase Medivac energy regeneration. To be super clear, guys, this means the rate at which the energy regents, not the healing. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they're doing this because of how many games in TVP, I suppose, or yeah, no, all the matchups, all, all the matchups, um, you know, medevac usage is actually a, a impactful thing, whether or not you're low in energy. Um, hmm. But that said, I see that where that can come from, where, what that's going to help. I don't see why it needed to be helped. I always thought that was actually a very interesting dynamic whenever, as a commentator, I got to point out that the units weren't being healed because he neglected mm -hmm. medevac production 
Um, I think that'll still happen, though, personally. Like, I think this changes shit, to be completely honest. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Yeah, like, like, but but I understand where they're coming from. They're replacing a, an upgrade that wasn't used for an upgrade that I think will also not be used. Yes, and, yes. Uh, yeah, and, and the reason for that isn't that, it, that it's not useful, is that it's useful retrospectively. Like, it's a lot of the time mm. you're not going to plan to run out of energy, right? So... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to account for how much yeah. you're going to fight, how much damage you're going to take, who, which units are going to die. That's just not something that players can do. So no one's going to get this upgrade, I think. Okay, I so believe so. I agree with you, Katz. I think there's one counterpoint. is what this does is this allows you to have... Uh, when we, you know, we, we talked about how maybe nerfing the ghosts a little bit is a, is a Terran late-game nerf. This allows you to have less Metavex in your late-game composition. Right? Because... You don't have to, if you're X amount and you stim it all, yeah, you know, the beam heals the same amount as it did previously, but you can heal more per medevac because you get more energy back faster. Yeah. And then that theoretically means less medevacs, which significantly, mm, potentially, not, but not really, right? Because improves with the, the power of the late numbers, game turn it's armor. more about sustain. It's more about the, like, the healing output that you do, like, as a burst, right? It's about keeping your army alive. Like, for example, mm -hmm. the more infestors there are, the more medevacs you make. It's not... You know, it's because you want to heal them over time while they're being fungled and stuff like that. That's the part that matters. And I don't have a problem. Like, the, the upgrade is useful if you could press a button and get it right there and then when you run out of energy. Um, so maybe if they reduce the cooldown to almost nothing, it's worth doing because if you have empty medevacs. But then again, we run into the problem that Jess was talking about, which is like it removes a lot of like the interesting parts of, of, of the medevac itself. Running out of energy is something to talk about, mm -hmm. is something interesting. So. Yeah, I, I personally hate that change, but yeah, I understand it. Just replacing one upgrade that was useless for another it, one. It is. And I think it is really important to know that this is on the fusion core, guys. Because I feel like I've seen people discuss this like and it. they just completely forget how late a fusion core comes into any Terran matchup. And if you open up battle cruisers, you're not going to get that particularly fast of Caduceus Reactor <laughs> before anyone comes at me with that one. <laughs> no, this is a late game. This this falls under the category I still think of kind of like what I would say miscellaneous upgrades, the ones that you get after all the important ones are done. Um, but I, I guess in theory, this will help the slow sea chop of Liberator because that's the time in which this will appear. If you have a fusion core in like TDP, that's what I'm thinking of, you're going to have Liberators and liberator range and you're gonna be slowly chopping maybe harassing a little bit and this is going to directly help that um which i could actually see being a direct help i don't know how much i see it being a direct help in late game tvz like late late game tvz or a late oh. late game tvt i feel like by late late tvt it's less about the bio anyways yeah, I was tank. thinking this was a TVP upgrade, but actually it might be decent in TVZ because yeah, you're not healing this. a ton of bio units. You're usually healing ghosts, which have a shit ton of energy anyways. So maybe in super late game TVZ, it might be worthwhile to get. My yeah, big question uh, is... I, I when you're super rich and you get every upgrade, you get this upgrade. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I think you get it every game when you get to that point. But the point at which it would be more impactful you would yeah. not get it. So late game TVZ, okay, I've seen a couple of situations where the medevacs are low on juice, but most of the time we think about medevac energy and we're thinking about the stutter stepping mid-game high octane yeah. action. And there's not, they're not going to fit the fusion core in there. No. Yeah. yeah. I actually Comes think the, the old upgrade was better. I, I actually think the, the old upgrade was stronger for the unit, like because it increased yeah. speed, right? Really? It increased, well, it increased speed. both passive and active speed was the big thing. Yeah, yeah. And both useless, no one, yeah. And, it, and it lowered the <laughs> cooldown on, yes. uh, or, or like the effective cooldown because it was active yes. longer. Yeah. Like, the boost that was actually longer. such a sick upgrade, the Ignite Afterburners, or what, I don't even, it's literally there and I don't know what it's called, but it doesn't matter. Oh, it was not called Caduceus Reactor, by the way. Definitely no, it was a high capacity fuel tanks. Was it? Yeah. I feel like that's not the most recent one. I don't know, maybe not. Uh, either way, what about the size of the unit on the minimap? Oh, yeah, I'm we'll, okay with we'll cover it. I'm, I'm totally fine with all oh, of sorry. those changes. Okay, yeah, I didn't want to derail. I just... Uh... Scarlet's yeah, got yeah, a rapid fine. reignition Keep system. Keep it tight. It is there. It is there. But I, I think everyone's in kind of an agreement, especially because it, it's leveled with every other unit. Oh, that's the one rapid reignition system. Thank you, Scarlet. Yeah. So a anyway... Um, I don't, I don't know. I think this is a better upgrade than the speed one, but I absolutely agree with cats. I just see this as being the upgrade you get alongside building armor. Yeah. It's like, well, I have the money. You know, I'll, I'll get it well. for sure, but yeah. you know, I won't race towards it. 
Um, mm-hmm. The Raven, I think this was a big issue. Uh, oh. Interference Matrix now requires research. So it's very cheap. It's relatively fast. And it's at the Starport Sec Lab, which, of course, you need to build a Raven anyway. Yeah. I yes. think I like this. I do, too. It's, cool. it's good. It means you need to build two, two Ravens in order to justify this, or your build becomes inefficient. Exactly. Yeah, because of the time, it's 37-something yeah. seconds, so, yeah. The number of... Oh, sorry, go on. No, no, go on. Oh, I was going to say, the number of people that are like, it's only 20 extra seconds, that's so stupid, and it's like, do you, you like, really don't understand how StarCraft works, do you? <laughs> like, how much 20 seconds is yeah, for, like, stage. the absolute top level... Bef- yeah, before like the six minute mark or the seven minute mark, or in, in some cases you get the Raven like before the five minute mark. Like this is a huge deal to the efficiency of the build. Mm-hmm. And it means if you're wanting to commit to this, you are committing to Ravens. You now, granted, to. a lot of builds already utilize two Raven anyways at this I mean, point, yeah. but yeah. it's a bigger commitment. I guess you could technically make one Raven, one Banshee or something like that. But yeah, for yeah. the most part, it's two ravens and and that is rather interesting right because like one raven right now in 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 uh tvp makes it so that you just have by the time colossus are out and stuff like that um they, they already have enough interference matrices to shut it down so two ravens is kind of sketch some people do it but for the most part yeah you know people default to the one raven as a safety so this mm. is also an, an, an indirect buff against like say like stuff like dts and such openers yeah. right because not everyone will want to open with the one raven uh, but yeah, I'm interested. I mean, two Ravens or Banshee Raven or Raven Banshee, most likely, I think, yeah, could be cool. You know what yeah. would be neat, actually, is Raven first into Viking for landed Viking harass. Just occurred to me. Because you can still build a Viking off of a Tech yeah. Lab starport. Like, that's, that's kind of nifty. That's, a, that's an idea. Yeah. Since a lot of people were opening up two Ravens nowadays anyway, in both uh-huh. CBT and TVP, I mean, yeah, I think I the upgrade like... will be really easy to get. Yeah, it's just more time. But I feel like well, I... I don't know. Maybe I'm watching different games, but I feel like it's, it's a lot of one-raven play. Um, it's, but I, can't, it's I watch a lot both. of Yun, and I don't want to watch a lot of the Europeans. So Like here, Marine is, just did a bunch. Okay, okay. No, just is right. I mean, there's there's both, but when you funnel it to one, it's a lot easier to interpret on the other side. That's the thing. Right? Yeah. It's like if you're opening Ravens, you're opening two Ravens. You you can't open one or two Ravens. So that like that's kind of the difference, and that's where it makes it a lot easier for... For Protoss, because if you're opening Ravens, okay, maybe I don't go Colossus then, because you're gonna have two of those, right? Whereas before, yeah. if you, yeah, mm-hmm. or or I go for a faster Templar transition, because now I can now I can feed back two Ravens two, instead of exactly. one, yeah. Uh, and then Storm is more effective because you've committed a bunch of resources. It actually is a the more I think about it, and the more you're talking about it, cats, the more I realize it's actually a super fucking elegant change, and it's, it's really a really cool, smart really. one. Um, really cool. and especially the DT point, that's a really good point too. Mm-hmm. It's gonna make DT openers. A little bit more common, maybe. For sure. It's really cool. I like that change. Yeah, yeah. I think this yeah, is yeah. the one that I, I like the most with everything in mind. Um, it's change up of every matchup. It's um, unfun factor being mitigated. Just, you know, you know, with the spell, it takes another unit out of the equation entirely. Mm. And uh, it was a goal of the patch and mm-hmm. a complaint from the community, which I think was very, very on point. So... Yeah. This is the one of the biggest slam dunks of the patch, in my opinion. It's this sure. approach to the Raven. Yeah, this is this is MVP for me. Now that now that I've talked about it a little bit more with with you guys, it's definitely MVP for me. I yeah. think it's top two. the The main link change is another one that is, yeah, for me, just uh, very up there. There's there's still a lot uh, to get through. <laughs> that 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 one we'll, we'll we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Yeah. So let's move on to Zerg. Uh, so the Lurker, the Adaptive Talents move speed bonus removed, which I kind of forgot uh, happened, but it's also got its cost reduction. Um, so it's it's a buff nerf. Um, Birth. It's a it's a nerf and then a buff. Um, yeah. But it uh, it doesn't. I I have issues with the Lurker um, that I wish I didn't have. To be fair, like I want the Lurker mm. to actually be a very viable unit and. Not just because of the Brood War history, but just because I think it can be a very interesting thing to play with. Mm-hmm. But I think the real challenge in StarCraft 2 has been mitigating its um, potential. Uh, like, so, and it, it is, it's so difficult to explain because basically, you know, we have Lurkers being exceptionally strong versus Protoss until the late game. And then, obviously, the different things have to happen once that carrier transition happens. But then, the more that the Lurker encourages a ZVP that ends in a 
you know, carrier versus corruptor battle, the more that I hate the fucking unit. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want it to be completely nerfed. And then you run into the problem of it just not being used at all. Because mm -hmm. a lot of Zerg players already have the opinion the Lurker actually isn't that great. You know, just because it kind of hard stops this one approach from the Protoss doesn't mean that overall it's all that great of a unit. So it, it's definitely a difficult place, but... Mm -hmm. Can I... I... I think that this is actually a very, very good change. For me, this might be top three or top four in it because this is... So Lurker's at the absolute highest level. Like you said, if they catch you off guard, they're going to catch you off guard, you know? If they do whatever. Um, like, if, if you're not prepared for them, they're going to be tough. If you are prepared for them, Lurkers kind of suck a little mm -hmm. bit, in, specifically in PvZ. Um, but this is just going to make it so that as you get a little bit farther down the ladder, lurkers are a little bit more punishable when mistakes are made. You're going to be able to outmaneuver them a little bit more. It, it's, it's once again, it's a game, it's a change that feels like it makes the game a lot friendlier to Protoss players. And things that make the game friendlier, I'm on board with, personally. Yeah. And, I don't and not know. only that steadfast. Oh. Okay, go ahead. Um, like, regardless of friendly or not, uh, the big thing here is that this this is one of those changes that actually builds identity rather than removes it, right? Yeah, it's a siege unit. Shouldn't yeah, exactly. Move a siege unit should not be yes. as mobile as it is. But um, Zemagrub, I know you you want to say something, and I I'll, I'll be quick. I promise. Uh, but there is one thing I do want to point out here, going off what you said, and it, it does touch on the Protoss changes. So we're gonna, but uh, there are a lot of changes to the Protoss that are buffing Sky Toss, and we're seeing changes and as well that like again. Uh, this makes the Lurker a little bit less powerful, but uh, we are seeing in general, it feels like we're moving towards the Sky Toss meta again. And I, I agree with you, and that makes me very sad. Oh, God, yeah. That yeah. makes me That's, very sad. That is a scary concept as a thought. Yeah. It's like, I'm looking at these yeah. balance changes, and it's just... Uh, yeah. yeah. We'll, uh, I think we'll definitely get into kind of an overall viewpoint of StarCraft too when we get to Protoss. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I just think the Lurker is in a very difficult position right now. And based off its identity and its severe um, place against Protoss ground, I, I do think it needs to be changed. But I would, I am completely understanding of the fact that it is difficult to change and still make it a usable yeah. unit. Uh, yeah. But adaptive talons, in my opinion, would just be completely gone. Anything to encourage speed on a siege unit should be completely mm. gone. Um, mm even though I like Tank of X. Uh, and something else uh, should, should be placed, but, you know, it is a difficult Absolutely. road. So yeah, I, I do like know, that I, it's... Oh, sorry. Go on. Oh, that's fine. I was just going to say, like, like, to violate my NDA just a little bit, like, they were looking at really wild ideas with the Lurkers, and mm. I was very excited, to be honest. But, uh, but we ran into Cyclone-type problems where it's like, wow, mm. like, that's just a big redesign. So um, uh, what I'm hearing here is we could have had the Lurkers redesign instead of the Cyclones. Which I, would have been, <laughs> I would have been so been much better. more for but, that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I would have. I was really hyped for. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, in any case, so we got yeah. what we got, and um, and yeah, I agree with you guys. I mean, to be completely fucking honest, I didn't know that it was a ten percent movement speed. Like I never noticed it. To be honest, at, at the level oh, that yeah. I play. Oh for sure. Like whether it's yeah relevant <laughs> for Serral or Raynor, maybe so. But uh, it's a pretty small change. It's just quality of life. I like it. I think we're all in agreement there. Yes. Yeah. It, It'll also make ZBZ a little bit less oppressive by like two percent in the super or well in the late game. Maybe you're able to. No, I'm. I don't know why I'm saying this. No, you're not going to be able to break a turtle lurker without lurking. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Yeah, um, not in ZBZ. <laughs> no, I really no. wish that they would have focused on changing the lurker if they wanted to pick a unit that they wanted to completely mm -hmm. redesign and take the risk that came with it as far as breaking the game then i i would have 100 percent would have rather been a lurker um mm -hmm. because that that is going to be agree. inevitable because i know like one of the first like kind of responses i get to this whole like they shouldn't be changing the cyclone so drastically or the mothership is that what well, you just want the game to be the same all the time no new changes just because like Ugh. and i'm like no i want to balance risk versus reward and mm. for me the cyclone is not deserving of such a debate uh but the lurker might be Anyway, yeah, the higher you go up the tech tree as well, the, the you know the less of the game it affects. So yeah, the cycle is very, very true. risky from that. Perspective. And the higher up the tech tree, the the more specialized the unit should be. True. I, that's that's my personal philosophy. I'm not no, going to say agree. that everyone agree, everyone agrees with me, but I that's at least that's my opinion. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Sure. Um, uh, one, sorry, one thing we didn't talk about was the size of the meta back on the mini map. Type. Yeah. It's I think that's good. really good. Good. Good change. I think it's amazing. Yeah. Okay. I am. Um, as a caster, look like occasionally on a clean feed and yeah, looking at a smaller too. portion of my screen. <laughs> that was my first thought. I'm like, I can see drops now. We're good. Um, Infestator is going to be a hot topic, I think. Yes. Oh, oh yes. I yeah, the Infestor <laughs> was like I had said. Okay, so Infestor, first of all, patch and glands upgrade removed. Infestor starting mm -hmm. energy is 75 now. Sungle growth cast range reduced and its damage has been reduced. So you get a fungal right off the bat, but the fungal is less good. Um, I will say what I said at the beginning, which is that I didn't really think the Infestor needed to be a target in the first place. I thought its place in the game was actually fine. And I was kind of getting more excited about the possibility of, of Dark, for instance, influencing other Zergs more and more. Hmm. Yeah. So I, um, I just like fundamentally don't agree at the very beginning of changing the Infestor. That said, if the Infestor is going to change, um, I don't know if I have a strong opinion. I have to think about it a little bit more. But yeah, I'll let you guys okay, take the floor for that one. <laughs> yeah, so like Infestor, I mean, my favorite unit ever in the game. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump on this one. Mm. But um, yeah, I mean, I agree. Like the Infestor has a strong identity with certain players. I've always loved it. I know Serral is like one of the highest and Dark. Serral and Dark basically are the two that... Mm seem to can use it, whereas a laser has never made an investor in his life because it's, you know, like either that or the Viper for, for him and type thing. Like it's, it's a stylistic thing. I don't think that changes for a laser, for example, right? Because it's an issue of how he has his hotkey set up and what he's willing to play with. But I do love the pathogen glands upgrade removed because all of those upgrades mm. that gave energy were shit. And they were in the game for no reason. And they have all been removed except for the pathogen glands. So this is the last of those upgrades to start. And, and secondly, the Infestor made sense to start with the energy that it started before because there was Infested Terrans, so it had some utility. It doesn't even have like a, like a High Templar attack anymore, like, you know, at all. So it's like you make Infestors without Pathogen Glands, they're just, they're just, they just don't do anything. So you have to basically get Pathogen Glands, and it just, it just seems useless. Like it's a, it's a thing that new players have to try to learn the timings and understand the timings on, mm. on, on, on when to get it. It is not a decision for the most part, right? You're not choosing. It's just a time gate. So I personally love what they did uh, with that. That opens up for new strategies as far as like potentially like rushing into, into the uh, neural parasite, for example. I think that's very mm. exciting. Um, and again, it's higher up the tech tree. So it's, you know, it's more specialized units. It's, it's, there's going to be more, more choices, I think, where the investor hasn't gotten very much love in general. And, and it's always... So I really like it. And, and for the late game, it's also balanced, right? Because 10 range versus 9 range is a huge difference. Like if you read it on paper, it, it doesn't seem to be that big. And, and the thing is that because the radius of the fungal is actually longer than the, radio, than, the, than the feedback range, you could actually fungal before, like at the edge of the radius and kind mm -hmm. of stop Protoss armies and kind of stop feedback and stuff like that. Um, and that's no longer going to be as good. So it's in the late game a nerf. And in the mid game, it's more viable, and I think it opens up for interesting strategies. So I personally love it. The damage reduction is also like a little bit of a nerf. I, I love it. Yeah. Haven't we learned from mid game buffs with late game nerfs? <clears throat> Ghost less patch. Uh, but I agree with you. Like in general, uh, I agree with you, cats. Uh, the one thing I will say is I, I, I you t you talk about having this energy upgrade not really having much utility. Mm -hmm. I think it does have it, but I don't necessarily know that the investors before and had the power budget to make it worth that. Uh, because what it does is it means effectively it increases your however long it takes for um, it, mm -hmm. it, without pathogen glands. It means that the build time of an, of an investor is effectively 25 seconds longer. But for those 25 seconds or however long, 23 seconds, whatever. It's just bad the, game it, design, though. If you get units that can't do anything, it's just bad yeah, game but design. It's just shit. The point of what I'm making here is like for sufficiently powerful units, it's a, it gives counter potential. Right? It means that they can be dealt with uh, instead of having immediate effect. Right? Like high Templars get warped in and you have to wait a little bit of time before they can, they can storm. But you have uh, feedback. They have yeah, you have some you use have feedback them. and you have yeah. And again, uh, I'm prefacing yeah. this by saying and, I'm and not sure investors on. have the power budget farther. to make yeah, that worthwhile. That Sorry, they have three things. Good, good points, steadfast. Like there's three things that the that the Templar can do right away. The investor yeah. has nothing that it can. It's just shit design uh, without that, this change. That's fair. What I, again? What I'm saying is I I don't know that I don't know the investors have the power budget for it, but I think I can see a world where their units that are sufficiently powerful that giving having them spawn in, having them take some time to become useful. 
and therefore giving counterplay is a good thing. Yeah, you still have that because it's still gated. Like there's still a time gate, for example, for the for the Viper. neuroparasite potentially, yeah. and also its its energy is you know like uh, important. Like you you don't want one fungal, right? Like you want more energy. It's still it's still gated behind time. I think it's I think it's just more interesting. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. The 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 fungal growth nerf is the, to damage though is going to be a big one. Mm -hmm. That is going to be that is going to be a lot bigger than I think a lot of people realize in the late game. Mm -hmm. um, there's already a few interactions that I think of that are going to be very different. So fungal growth parasitic bomb will no longer one shot metavax from full HP. Uh, obviously they mention it in this particular setup. The uh, you know two infestors can no longer kill uh, metavax with like double fungal. But now, now it's such a like devastating hit to the DPS that I don't even know if four infestors or four mm -hmm. fungals are going to kill this anymore. Be like even just two medivacs. Like if you really quickly retarget your medivacs, like keep a moving them as you're being fungled, they'll keep rechanging targets to the lowest HP. I think you might be able to actually sustain like at least I think through like three fungals. It's it's going to look a little silly, I think, for some of it. I, That's I the only thing. Yeah. There. The, the biggest worry would be making mid-game infestors too powerful, which I just think we're past worrying about that. Mm. Obviously, this is more Broodlord Infestor Arrow. This would be the most insane thing ever. But I would be fine with seeing more mid-game infestor use if the fungal was less good. Because I think also fungal is just a one of those spells that I've never liked in any type of RTS, like a slow spell. Um, mm. Marauder slow, I'm, I'm generally okay with, but fungal starts to get me a little agitated and then obviously mm. old fungal was the most <laughs> tilting thing ever so <clears throat> like yeah, i, I place here. overall i'm fine with this the more i thought about it um yeah i think it's cool yeah and i do think really helping particularly late games evp is definitely where i was thinking positively for this one yeah, yeah uh, for sure <clears throat> yeah yeah so. definitely mm -hmm. yeah yeah all right, uh, Spire. So I had issues with these types of changes, and I couldn't explain why, and I still can't. And I guess I'm just gonna like say like, okay, I guess I have no issue. Something about their reasoning for reducing the armor upgrade costs just rubbed me the wrong way. Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I think for a in particular, change. right? Because may, maybe I'm just I have some myopia here, but most of the times you talk about air upgrades, you talk about how flyer armor upgrades are the better upgrade. No, and no. maybe that's just my myopia because like you no, default only, to attack upgrades otherwise. Only in um, ZBZ. And you don't talk about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Only, only in ZBZ, ZBZ. Muta versus Muta. Well, yeah. Corruptors versus Battlecruisers and things. At least there was a time when that was the play. I, I, I think that's still a choice. I think Corruptors against uh, Carriers, definitely. Yeah. You could consider that because they're damage mm -hmm. out. Against Battlecruisers is whatever because the Battlecruiser doesn't really kill anything. So having more damage output to actually like, kill the Battlecruiser faster is usually... Yeah, you know, a little bit better, I think. Whereas against carriers, they have to sustain more. I mm. like it. I like it because it offers more, more of a choice. Whereas before, mm. it was too easy to go for the attack. Uh, and now, broodlords versus thors will feel a little less shit uh, <laughs> I, on the transition. Well, a lot enough. less shit. I mean, the broodlord is broken. <laughs> like that speed is insane. Yeah. Yeah. The, oh, um... No, no, no. I'm talking specifically just about the armor upgrade. I'm, I'm not addressing the broodlord change yet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, no, no. I'm only talking about like that interaction of do I get armor or attack for my broodlords when they've got like I don't know plus two Thors or something or like mm -hmm. plus one Thors. You know what? I think the thing that bothers me is that we never really had a reason for why it was in the first place, which would Wait. then encourage me to like this change from Blizzard. Yes, they didn't <laughs> understand their game, right? Like it's they they just didn't adjust it. I think. Like, it's true. I mean, if we look at the maps yep. that they put out at the start, right, it's not, it's not like they had a solid grasp on how things were going to play out. This was just something that was never changed, never addressed. So they probably just thought, oh, Carapace, I don't know if it was stronger in Brood War. I don't even remember. But they had to have some baseline that was just not... They didn't I don't just, think so. just didn't hold up. Mm -hmm. Same idea, I, mean, I think, as StarCraft 2. <clears throat> there have definitely been times where, well, upgrade costs have been messed around with. Although I guess what I'm thinking of more than anything is like, the interplay of whether ground and air mech should have the same upgrade or not, but that is a much bigger change. So yeah, mm. it's a very different conversation. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I mean, even thinking through it, I'm kind of I'm supposed to be in favor of this. It just something about it was really weird. It felt it felt yeah. almost flippant. 
<laughs> is why I guess I initially had issue. I think issue. it is. I think it is somewhat flippant. I think you're right. Yeah, it's kind of a but might as well change. It might be flippant because it. Yeah, exactly. It's not a very because important change, so, anyways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's an easy decision to make. I think like no one looks at this and is like, at least on the pro side. And I don't know how the community feels about it, but for me, it's like a brush off change. Yeah, quality of life mm -hmm. makes sense. More choice. Yeah. Like okay, yeah. and now on to the biggest debate of them all. I think we've <laughs> talked about this enough. We can skip it. We already did this one. We've, we've already, already discussed. We're, we're good. All right, so we're just clear that it's a terrible design. And I hate it, and it should be removed. Okay, got it. Yeah. Move it on. Move on exactly. to Viper, Viper Whisker. Glad you understand. <laughs> glad, glad we're on the same, same side here. All right. Um, no, seriously, the Viper is definitely just a quality of life attempt at improvement. Yeah. So the Broodlord. So th this is, again, more of like a theoretical thing, I think, than the, the, actually looking at the, the details. Theoretically, I do not want my slow-moving siege units to be made faster. Mm -hmm. And... On again a very theoretical scale, I've never enjoyed movements as a change. Mm -hmm. I think movement has more of a knock on effect than people expect. Mm. And I think it's usually a band aid solution to more foundational problems because we've had a lot of attempts to speed change in StarCraft yeah. 2 across a lot of different units. So, in yeah. particular, trying to make a speed change on a unit that is known for being a slow siege unit, I am just heavy thumbs down on the entire concept. And reminder as well it's, that this is the second speed change the Broodlords have had the Broodlord has had in two patches. Sure. It yeah. went from 1.97 and it's going to 2.62. That is a full one. That is a. <laughs> we put it in the context. This is a big move change. Put in the context yeah. of what it used to be is a massive move change. Yeah, I think there's two perspectives to be taken here. For, like as a player, like I enjoy this change to some degree, like just more mobility and stuff like that. We've also mm -hmm. like talked about like how the maps are like uh, have been evolving if the broodlord existed back in wings of liberty for example it's fine to, for it to be slower right like because you you cover more area of the map but as maps grow then mobility becomes more important and then the broodlord becomes very difficult to to use i think is is part of the issue uh like it doesn't have a solid place so i agree that this is somewhat of a band-aid fix but i'm not sure what else they can do um and from the perspective that you guys are bringing up basically like there was a lot of concern at Blizzard and when designing the game and, and whatnot, and I think it was is very valid, is that we're not or they shouldn't just be designing for the for the hardcore player base, but from the you know from like like a newer uh, person perspective or even just a campaign or co-op type person, you want those large units to somewhat feel a little bit more sluggish, to feel like they are like massive and to yeah. feel like you know like so so from that perspective, I completely agree and I agree that it's a band-aid change as a player. I kind of like it. I think it's overdoing it a little bit with the speed. I don't think the Broodling changes really do all that much. Um, so, so yeah, it's kind of gravitating towards like a, like a Brood War Guardian more than anything else, except it's still pretty good against tanks, the, the Broodlings, but that doesn't really change anything. Yeah, and you know, they, that's actually something that Alex wrote in the Reddit thread. Do you like the idea of Broodlords becoming more like Guardians or something? Oh, really? Yeah. That's that was yeah. the... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember that. Because that's, yeah, that's what's <laughs> happening. Yeah, except the the except guardians are still so too fundamentally different to really be compared to or to be a goal because they don't have free units that pop out. And by free units, I mean units that literally require getting killed or dying of their own accord before you can move on to the actual unit. Mm -hmm. For some reason mm -hmm. people get anal about the free unit. Yeah, <coughs> which we got nerfed to shit, right? Like that's the thing. Is like for me, like the the place that the broodling is at is like not like identity wise. Since we've been going over identity so much, like the broodler doesn't feel much like a like a broodling mom, right? Or or dad. It mm. feels more like more like a guardian because it's because mm. the the little things are so irrelevant, especially uh, except for very niche scenarios against units that are like say if there's like a mech army, Thors are very slow to shoot. So you know, like there they matter because they actually absorb one full Thor shot. But if there's any Hellions or stuff like that, they don't, they don't do anything. It's just tanks that they mm. basically hard counter because of their own splash damage. And for everything else, it's just like, a, like, a, like, oh, like I'm going to annoy you with bathing a little bit, I guess. But they don't do shit. So the suggestion that I would have, because I don't know why they're changing the Broodlord. Can, can someone just give me like a matchup and particular problem? I think like they're very difficult general, to use, so it's difficult to find the problems. Okay, that wasn't helpful. But if the problem was ZVT, mm -hmm. which I think is the problem, correct me if I'm wrong, they don't exist in ZVZ. ZVP, ZVP, usually both of your armies are so slow and you're so much more about using other like zealot run buys or ling run buys mm -hmm. 
that that's not an issue. Brute Lords the- also are usually matched at a slower type of composition versus ZV- in ZVT as well. Like the Terran's also in a slow composition. Although I think the argument would be, ZG, that <laughs> Broodlords force those commensurate slow compositions. And without the Broodlords being so slow, you could go for faster compositions. I don't know that I agree with it. Right. But... Um, I mean, I'm not sure. Like, they're, I think what you're saying is like kind of retroactive to what's happening. Uh, like, I think that you go Broodlord when there is slow compositions, in a sense, because then you don't have to worry about getting outpaced so much. Yeah. So it's kind of the same thing that you're saying, but backwards, in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, I like, agree with Katz's addition to that. So, like, I'm, the way I think about this in part is like, well, Broodlords are somewhat of an answer, depending on game state, to mm-hmm. Robo units, right? Much mm-hmm. like Vipers are, but in a little different way. So, if you can't go Robo units, you can either build a lot of Blink Stalkers, but that's probably not going to work out super well, or you go Sky Toss. Your game slows down. Um, but I'm thinking, I guess, specifically ZVP and, and not ZVT, where Broodlords, I guess, are more of a <coughs> response to. Go smack late game, yeah. kind of Maru Terran. The, so the, the um, goal that they've set here is that they want to allow more active play in the late game, less stalemate scenarios. And I just don't think move, making the Broodlord speedy is actually going to change that dynamic of StarCraft II all that much. I think at the yeah, end of the day, late game naturally recedes in, in, um, battlegrounds like there's less battlegrounds the longer mm-hmm. a game goes the battlegrounds are around the resources mm-hmm. the less battlegrounds I mean, there are the more that we evolve into a slow siege unit type of game yeah, it mm-hmm. becomes a game of efficiency rather than and, tempo yeah having yeah and then so so trying to make it a tempo based game by changing units individually i just don't think is going to work I think it helps a little bit. I agree with you. Like, I don't think it's like, you know, like, a, like it solves every, every problem in that regard. But definitely, like, right now, the Bridler is very difficult to move out with. Even, even if you have, yeah. it, you have it, you have to keep it in, in a somewhat neutral position <laughs> that can kind of answer wherever your opponent comes from. And if you're out on the map and they just attack you, you can't retreat, right? So yeah, it's, yeah. That's fair. I, I kind of like it. I think it's overtuned is my problem. Like, it's a lot of speed. Um, mm. So I think, you know, I think from a balance perspective, maybe they should tweak it. From the other from design perspective, I guess it's. I think it's fine. But How do you... and from the lore perspective, I think it's kind of a loss, right? Like it's like. Yeah. 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 yeah if you're gonna make these changes or make this, maybe make it again a little bit more maneuverable on the map. And uh, I am with you all on the identity. By the way, we've been talking about this a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, how do you feel about upping the supply of the Broodlord? Right. No. Uh. So I here's... mean, really, Broodlords aren't a problem in a lot of ways if you have like ten of them. You know, they're, they're, a solid, they're a solid component of the army, but the big issue is when you get up to, like, 20 broods or something. Like, you really start to have that heavy broodlord component. Mm. And that's when things yeah. really start to bog down. Yeah, but... Uh, down. I like the idea that they're bogged down. Even with, um, <laughs> even with 10 broodlords, even if you secre- increase the supply by one, that means five less corruptors in a late-game composition. That's, like, you know... Uh, Two less infestors, two less vipers. Like I, I don't think. Or less I think that would be. I think that would be too heavy-handed. Um, but I, I, I don't know. It's, it's one of those changes that I guess we'll have to feel it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it'll I, allow you to maybe <laughs> be a little bit more microbial in response to the change to the tempests. Maybe this is. Oh, maybe God. we're not looking at this. Yeah, no, that's a good point. In, and like maybe we're looking at it in too much of a vacuum, not in, not enough yeah. as like a, a companion right. change. Um, right. Yeah, this will be this will allow but, for units to be more microbial, but it's also going to make controlling the super late game Zerg army even more difficult. And it's already so fucking difficult with corruptors, vipers, queens, uh, infestors, vipers, corruptors, mm-hmm. vipers, no oh, broodlords. I put vipers everything twice. and and spores and I don't. Well, know you don't control queens. the spores unless you're like you can reposition them, but you yeah. shouldn't yeah, be doing I, uh, that during the fight. I, I hate the Protoss's choices, um, but we'll get there and we'll get there. Protoss's. Oh, because we have another change that I think is making ZZ, ZZ yeah. and I know it's making me very upset. I don't know about the rest of you. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, you want to move well, on to the well, next one? <laughs> yeah, no, I just wanted to say one more thing, which is that I, okay. I was actually thinking ZVT, uh, you know, this is a problem, and... Um, just to prove that I'm not totally anti-Zerg, I swear I'm not. I actually feel like if, they, for instance, they're thinking of like late game versus late game, Thor, Hellback Ghost versus um, Broodlord and Fester Viper or something. Uh, obviously the Ghost changes, 
like literally an already in goal set. I also would not mind them taking another look at the mm. Thor. The Thor became oh, yeah, a very hard counter to Broodlords without Neural Parasite. Um, to a point which I actually laugh at any Zerg who makes Broodlords against me. Unless it's a surprise. And then I'm fucked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but if it's not, I'm just like, lol, Thor's all that. No, no, no. Or they have like perfect spell casting. They have fungal, you know, neurals. And, if they have neural, or, then I'm like, no. Sorry. But uh, fungal and, nice. yeah, anyway. Anyway, um, then, then the Thor might, you know, the ghost's already being looked at and the Thor might have to be looked at as well. Um, mm-hmm. As opposed to moving a siege unit faster and faster and faster. But you're right. Maybe we should move on um, to the thing that I, 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 this is another one where I'm just confused more than anything else. I'm confused <sighs> about the Cyclone and I'm confused about the Overlord because the acceleration speed increased. Um, so, you know, they, they have an, a less awkward stop, I, mm-hmm. I suppose, the best way to put that. And a yeah. generation uh, creep delay reduced. So they creep faster um mm. was apparently to allow for more active usage of queen drops and this mm. i'm just so confused about i thought the community agreed that the queen shouldn't be offensive and that we nerfed it mm. so that it wouldn't be as powerful but also because of the design choice it just didn't make any sense like, so here we are just dropping in casually a buff to queen drops offensive queens again why like mm. there are unit archetypes right you have offensive units you have defensive units and you have like utility units why it, 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 I, I'm of the opinion here that it is good design that a unit has at most fulfills at most two archetypes, really one and a half, I guess, maximally. Why are we making it okay for a Zerg to have for a queen to have all three? I, I mean, I'm, I'm just agreeing with you, but like, right. I, I don't, I don't think this is necessary. I don't think this is, I mean, maybe this is a response to all this guy's house buffs we're going to talk about, maybe. but. I I I think that's the wrong direction. Uh, yeah, we, queen pushes are just not fun. I, I don't I I don't know. I think they're kind of fun. I think the problem that we had before was a million queen pushes, right? Like 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 yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna walk across with like twenty queens, and you know they will yes, be getting it was gathering too energy. Yeah, mm-hmm. but now I mean I've I've always enjoyed dropping queens. I think it's good. The my problem with this change is the same as as with with the larger units. If anything, it's that the Overlord looks like a big sluggish unit, and now it's going to be a little bit more agile. So, um, but from gameplay, I mean, it's going to feel snappier. It's going to feel better. Um, and and I don't I don't know that it will become much much pro, much of a problem on the back of this, right? Because it creeps a little bit faster or something like that. Um, and, and yeah, I agree with you, Biomolf, and that the Queen is you know kind of just the anchor core unit for Serge. it has always been and changing it is very difficult because it's just so important but uh but yeah she's always carried a lot on, on her shoulders i guess although we, we talk about these changes i actually i think the much more problematic one is the the second one uh you know pull a hands here you know zombie grip steadfast uh cats how many games have we watched where we said, you know what? I think the issue with the Zerg is, I think they don't have enough harassment options. They have Banelings in the mineral lines they can run in. They have Ling run bys. They have Nidus play. You have all these other things. I, I think they need another. I think they need to have even more <laughs> harassment potential as they're going for backstabs. They, I, um, yeah. I don't think that's the problem. They, they also already have transport harassment. Yeah. Like they already it's do okay that sometimes. It's okay that it's slow because all the other ones are mm-hmm. fast. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree with this too. I mean, I think they they literally say that in combination with the bailing damage nerf, um, this is like an like an evens trade. I would go ahead and say that Zerg was already a little too good in some scenarios versus Protoss, and we didn't need a counteract. We didn't need a balancing of that. You just needed to get rid of something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that but is the, my opinion. But plus two <laughs> melee banes are easy to run into a mineral line. Yeah. Dropping with creep or dropping with overlords. That is a lot more attention required, and that is a lot more difficult to do. I think that this is an, too. exactly and more expensive in terms of like the overlords are now vulnerable. Like they're an extra twenty five minerals, twenty five gas, which doesn't seem wait, like but, much. But, but if when, you want to do that, that's like five overlords for like a masked ling drop. When people do it, it is very effective, regardless of a speed increase. It's the choice of whether or not to do this. Like you have, uh, you have so. Many, Arguably, you have like Zerg has more harassment options than any other race for the most. Like Terrans have drops, you can I run disagree. it. You can run it so I strongly mean, with that. Hard to disagree. Yeah, yeah it's it's. it's <laughs> I think it's very complicated. <laughs> yeah, it's fair. I'm like I'm thinking like of like this whole sole number of vectors that you can that you can kind of choose to harass with. Right? Disagree. Um, Actually, 
like yeah. like <laughs> like hard 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 disagree i think zerg suffers the most from not having like a viable transport um in the sense of like when you look at a war prism that's some fancy ass micro you can pull. When you look at a medevac, you can do some fancy ass micro. You can do doom drops. You can do lots of things that are fun, that are highly interactive. What does this encourage? This interact. This encourages just a little bit more interactivity. This is a good change. This is a good change, and I will die on that hill. Like this is. I don't. I don't mind it for gameplay. I, I don't mind it. I think it's not too big either. It, it doesn't come into play very often, right? Like no one's gonna be massing overlords that much. Like usually, if you're gonna mass, this is the how the fucking Zerg Nidus. cabal strikes. It's not that big of a deal. It's okay. It's not that oh, bad. Oh, come on. Like, look at the changes. <laughs> They're super minor. Like, they affect, like, one unit per game times? if they decide to make it. How many times have I heard this in the Surge and Zerg subject? <laughs> I feel like I've heard it more than twice, you know? Like, it, it, it too many just, like, what's it going to hurt? Ends up, you know, 50 pounds heavier yeah. and diabetes, all right? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is this is just like this is this is a change though that rewards good play. You know, that's mm. what that says yeah. to me. And it, this rewards interactive and like highly <laughs> attention based play. Whereas something like running plus two melee banes into a mineral <laughs> line is not okay. So it's not that difficult. It's not sorry, that easy. That much ahead. I agree. That much I 100 percent agree with. The baneling stuff was way too easy and way too effective. Agreed. I think everyone agrees on that um you know but the point of making things speedier and snapper kind of goes back to being like the whole homogenous argument which is that not only do i think that's bad for like mm -hmm. the 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 feeling of the game where you're just like that's a slow heavy unit and i know that yeah. right off the bat um but also for the you know the phrase that is uh um oh, if i remember it when all three factions are equal but 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 they don't have the same units oh my god what is it called <clears throat> Asymmetrical balance. Everything's equal. Thank you. Is, huh? Asymmetrical oh. balance. I thought you were Thank looking for a quote. So I was much. running yeah. quotes. In <laughs> no, yeah. no. Steadfast nailed it. Um, nice. Asymmetrical balance. You know, so immediately as Steadfast starts kind of, you know, bringing up medevac drops and war prisms and shit, I'm like, yeah, but that's that's where the Zerg speed on the ground really does highlight itself as a race. You I know? think we are overblowing mm -hmm. out of proportion, like some of the smaller changes, so to some degree, right? Like, it's but not like their why. identity changes that much. This is why we tend to blow over the small ones, blow up on the small ones so much. Someone actually pointed out in chat, though, they're like, you know, the, the ones that don't matter, we spend the most time on. And I yeah. Exactly. Like yeah. There is a reason more than just we're anal, okay? And, and that reason is that it feels like these tiny things are what gets by. And they all accumulate. Ah, I see, I see, like, I see. Think about how many times <laughs> void rays were buffed sequentially in really small in really small ways. And then uh -huh. we have a year and a half of it wasn't all of a sudden. Misery. Like there was there was a big patch. For the point rate. That <laughs> yeah, that was like three yeah. buffs at once. <laughs> That was yeah. that was that was like the yeah. opposite of what we're talking you're, you're about. You're making this, it, yeah. You're making it sound like they snuck up on us. Yeah, all of a was, sudden, like the, the last this number was like that we cavemen did. suddenly having the atomic bomb. Like this yeah. was like <laughs> such a huge, and I do mean that as an insult to people who turtled void rays. Uh, that was like, that was such a gigantic buff to the void ray. Like the like it was so astronomically large. I don't know that a unit has ever experienced such a huge power spike. From a uh, from a single patch, then the void ray during that one. I'm sure I'm glossing over a bunch, but like that was a really strong one. <laughs> yeah, I guess I I was th in, in my head it like the um, the B the 502 patch that gave him everything. In my head, like at least one of those changes was a previous patch. Hmm. It should um, have been, but no, they were <laughs> they were they all had, together. Like, they did have four seven. Like they did have um, like three straight patches of buffs. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in my head they were a little bit more spread out. Uh, Ultralisk. Yeah, one moving on. Cheaper. Um, moving on. Ultralisk's 25 minerals cheaper. This hey. is the hill that I'm going to die on. <laughs> <laughs> if I build nine ultras, I get a free ultra and minerals. I, I think Whoa. you should spend at least no, 14 sorry, 12, minutes I built 12 on this. ultras, this I get a free ultra and change. minerals. If you get nine ultras, you get, yeah, sure, nine it's, zerglings. It's not irrelevant. It's, it's one zergling, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to yeah, make a graphic card. that's like a punch out card for Subway. But it's for ultras. Every time we get nine ultras, <laughs> yeah, you get nine ultras, sorry, you get one just free. so we're clear, it's twelve ultras. It's not nine. I did my math oh, wrong at first. Oh okay, wow, 12. that's even. Uh, you oh, should have the gas as well. The gas counted as a resource, even though it's. You well, should... I'm it's saying true. like it's it, true. One free ultra of minerals. But yeah. Oh my god! Talking. So yeah, you go to Subway, you hand in the card, and they just give you the bread. They <laughs> don't give you anything. <laughs> right, right, right. Still gotta buy the. Still gotta buy the sub, but like we'll give you a nicer bag. Yeah. 
Gosh, that is such a weird one, though. It's funny. Um, the borough on borough time reduction actually, I think, is kind of a that that's. There, there's also I said this in the last patch. I feel like there's a lot of um. The last patch actually had a lot of unintuitive in a good way uh, changes. That that is to say, like not just the like mm. here's the movement speed, here's the acceleration yeah. speed, here's the damage. Mm. Like they actually had some really cool like oh well, you could also change this thing like the damage point and you can change this thing. Um, and this one is a little lacking in in that a lot of it is kind of on the nose and like I said maybe band aid solutions. But the burrow on burrow time for an ultra list is one of those things where I'm just like yeah you know that is kind of an annoying feature about the ultra whenever you use it. You know, I mean, it makes sense because it's big and it has to burrow a gigantic ass. But, but, but like gameplay wise, like, yeah, I could see that being faster. Exactly. Yeah, okay. It's well, where I'm torn, did, yeah. didn't they go? They went to Weight Watchers last patch, so that makes sense that there's it like does. less time. You know, like it just took them. The ground. Yeah, like they got the opposite of a Brazilian butt job, and now they're like able to burrow a little <laughs> bit faster. Hey. You know what they're pushing here, right? We just talked about the Overlord change. Uh, by making ultras burrow easier, uh, they're pushing ultra harass, and specifically, they're pushing drop, uh, drop, uh, yeah, ultra drops again. That's yeah. what this is for. <laughs> These two changes, we figured it out. That's what this is. <laughs> I like it. Which no, yeah, slightly really faster overlord is it in? Yeah, it's, 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 it's the same issue as before with with the bigger units, right? It's like fantasy wise, it's like a loss, and gameplay wise, it's a win for me at least. It just, it'll yeah. just feel better, yeah inconsequential yeah. i think but cool mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'm fine with them continuing to uh tweak the ultra it definitely still hasn't found its place yet uh yeah. and i you know overall i think it's a good unit for starcraft um the mm. hydralisk i really don't like this <laughs> i really don't <laughs> there, there's, there's, there's a precedent i'm gonna get my i'm gonna get my lawyer business suit on and i'm gonna i'm gonna use the word precedent there is precedent to this being an absolutely terrible idea and they acknowledge how many that times? Yeah. how many times have we swapped this they acknowledge, uh, at least twice, but they've acknowledged. They said the strength of hydra-based timings we monitored versus Protoss during the testing period. I, I don't understand what they have seen in the game that makes them believe that it'll go better than the last two times these upgrades have been combined. Yeah. Um, yeah, I completely agree with you. I think that there were more interesting options on the table, even like a, like a, like a plus one armor would have been nice just so the hydra doesn't fall off in, in CVP, but then that brings problems potentially in CVT, right? Like against bio. Um, mm. so I, I think that this was just kind of like a, let's make some kind of change solution is what it reads like to me, but I agree. I mean, it, it kind of strengthens the Hydra where it is strong, which is for timings. So yeah, it's a little sketch. It's too strong. I think, I yeah, think this is the fourth time, by the way, that we've split them and brought them back together. This is going to really? be the fourth time in, sorry, fourth time new won't, I think it won't be, it won't be the fourth time. I think they'll test it yeah. and change it yeah. or so, increase the yeah. cost or the time or something. Yeah. Um, and Legacy of the Void, I, I didn't take a look at Wings of Liberty Heart of the Swarm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this is definitely the bunker cha bunker build time change of... Uh, well, way more impactful than that, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's yeah, so it's much mad. more broken, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah like, is, we were talking it is, about... Uh, it is really strong. <laughs> it is really strong. Really strong we were talking about the whole, this, like, it feels like we're going into yeah. Skytoss with the Protoss change that we'll talk about. This is, like, the one, like, hey, don't do that. <laughs> the thing is, I would I would prefer this... If they were just like, yeah, it's 150, 150, and 100 seconds. Right. I think I'd be okay 100, with that. Because 140, well, I guess 100 seconds would bring its, bring its uh, speed down. Because right now, each upgrade is 150, 150, 71. Uh, is it 100, 100, 150, I, 150? I no, it's, 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 yeah, you're right. It's a little bit extra gas. It's, uh, yeah, it's 100, 100. So you, you save 50 minerals, 50 gas. But yeah, you see, you save 71 seconds. Yeah. Uh, now I actually want... Now what I want is the ability to combine the upgrades and I, I want to either have the option of doing one in a one back to back and it's cheaper or you spend more. It takes a little bit less time, mm. but it that's costs more money. So yeah, that's just the kind of thing. Oh, that very, is like, it's very convoluted. It's so <laughs> stupidly convoluted. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, that's yeah. the problem is communication. Yeah. Okay, so I think it it sounds like we agree this this probably won't even make it to life. I, I, I think that's actually because it it, it's so life. easily provable. A lot of the times these things aren't specific enough that we can like really get we we literally force two pros down and tell them to play over and over again. Mm -hmm. Um it's not specific enough or they don't want to play in some of like the longer tournaments that have balance patch <clears throat> as their goal. This is something you can literally get two players down 
and like constantly battle each other, which they might have done to even lead to this. They might have gotten Hearthstone versus Scarlet. You know, just sorry, throwing out names here. Um, <laughs> you know, names that are usually relevant to the Balance Council. <laughs> and and they decided, you know what, this actually isn't as strong as it used to be because of X and Y reason. And that that would be cool. But then I would love that explanation. And then I would also love, of course, more yeah. people giving it a go because Harsim and Scarlet aren't the only good Zergs and Protosses. No, no, yeah, and there is a, I mean, it's a large balance council. Like all, all the all the pros are in there and, and have an option to give their opinion. Sorry, yeah. is it? Did you choose Harsim and Scarlet because they both hate Protoss? <laughs> Uh, I mean, for Harsten's video, he didn't have like he was not super involved in this one at all. So yeah, that's yeah, what I know. I'm just I'm just our our star, starcrafting. I'm yeah. just being um, um, yeah. no. Anyways, I, I think we're gonna Cabal. yeah. Uh, no more discussion on the Hydra one then. So the Baneling. So the Baneling is a big. Um, it, it's huge. It is huge. Sure. So it's it's hugely impactful into ZDP. No doubt about that. Honestly, this is going to change so many games. Of all yeah. the games I can think of in ZVP where 40 probes would have only been 15 or 20, that would have been game changing for more than half of the ZVPs that I've seen, probably. Yeah. But then, I am but then there is the issue of ZVT, which I will respect. Like, I understand changing the Bane Lang changes more things than just ZVP and ZVZ as well, but like, whatever. Um, but I, I, that's why I kind of gave a nod of approval when they, they specifically even brought that up. They were like, well, we had to change other things because then the two base uh, Terran pushes are really strong. And I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Okay. What yeah. did you do? You reduced the cost of the speed and the time of the speed uh, upgrade and uh, actually another nerf, but <clears throat> still. Yeah. So I read that as like, these are two separate changes. The the plus two change, I don't think that impacts breakpoints on killing marines at like much at all. Well it doesn't directly, right? Because because usually it's not just marines, it's marines with yeah. like medevacs and such. So yeah, like the, yeah so if and you're bangs with lings. Yeah. Yeah. Well the, the point is it's like we have the one change, which is now we don't have to see Protoss players defend every side and be totally fine and the one bane squeaks through and they lose the game. Um, which is change number one. Change number two is is nerfing the the banelings uh in the mid to late game. Well, maybe getting centr centrifugal hooks a little faster. Mm -hmm. All right, those are two changes in one. Because again, I, I don't think the plus... Again, we, we talk about uh, getting plus two melee has no impact, really, or very little impact on defending a two-base green tank right. all in. If you get to 2-2, two, two, you probably have won the game as the Zerg. Uh, th these are two very... They're, they're packaged together because it's Banelings, but at least in my reading of this, these are kind of two different targets and two very separate changes that just happen to be happening to the same unit at the same time. I'm confused why you're grouping. So like, let's see. So it's central. What, what are your two groups again? So we have the bonus damage, right? Which is, uh -huh. Hey, Protoss players, <laughs> you're, you're not punished for letting one single mainly get through anymore. Okay. And then you have the other three, which are dealing with a totally, which are dealing with a totally different thing. Uh, right. I where see, they I want see. to remove the bonus health from cent centrifugal hooks to make, Banelings less. Uh, this is going uh, like I think bullet point four maybe mm -hmm. of the the patch where they want Banelings to be one of those units that's less dominant in the late game in the middle yeah. late game. So they're saying, okay, we're gonna make yeah. Banelings less tanky, but to do so, we have to make them. You know, you have to be able to survive the two base Terran pushes. Right. So yeah. we're gonna make you're gonna get them a little faster and you're gonna get them a little cheaper. Yeah, I, that, yeah, I think I understand. Yeah, and I agree. Like it's just a well rounded, strong unit, kind of like the Queen, right? It's like the unit that's received the most criticism since Wings of Liberty. So I think it's cool that they're addressing it so broadly. Um, and that's where the Hydra armor maybe wouldn't be so crazy mm -hmm. because the Veining is mm -hmm. kind of getting fucked on in CVT. So it's kind of yeah, but I like it. It's it's, it's huge. It's the yeah. biggest nerf of the patch, I think. Right? Yeah, it really uh, is. It is. It, it well because it's a double nerf, and both of them are highly yeah. impactful. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 a it's a big hit. It mm -hmm. is a big hit. If you're if Protoss players can't win versus Zerg with this change, like <laughs> oh, come on. I don't know what we have to do, <laughs> wow. man. Like, do we have to start <laughs> cutting people's hands off? Like, do, like <laughs> do we do we say Cyril can no longer use more than one finger per per hand at this point? Like, is I he? Say. I don't know what you need to do because it's gonna take a lot. Yeah. Mm. I will say on the Colossus range, for example, like I, I thought that was a pretty cool uh, change that life did to the game. <laughs> like the, just, you know, however the bugs happened. Yeah. But uh, but with this type of change to the Baneling as well, it becomes more dangerous also because like with this, like it, it, they bring him really, really low after like three ticks of storm or something like where if you have like one Colossus also shooting from that sort of range, like it can become yeah. dangerous. So, uh, yeah. 
stalkers with plus two will now two shot banelings. Or sorry, plus three, plus three. Um, oh, the, which sounds there's fine. There's also there's also something interesting um, where uh, plus three melee. If you have two armor upgrades, uh, whether that's plus one shields, plus one armor, plus two shields, or plus two armor, uh, they'll now survive. Uh, even if you have plus three melee. Mm-hmm. So as long as the okay. Protoss has any any second forge at all, uh, even hive tech banelings are no longer going to two, uh, one shot. There's like a lot of interactions, a lot of For really sure. small interactions that are taking a huge swing. Like mm-hmm. people look at this and they're like, that's a big change. But like, no, like this that's is huge. a, this is a gargantuan monolithic change. Like this yeah. is I think. huge. Yeah. He's plus one Archon's one-shot Banes now. I think if I'm but this is, right. This is exactly the risk-reward that I'm in favor of. Yeah, agreed. Mm-hmm. Which is the Baneling yeah. has always been complained about, has always been murmured to be one of the more problematic units in StarCraft II. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not the focal point every time, but it's, it's definitely brought up. And uh, if, if it ends up breaking the game entirely, then I would say the risk is worth it because the Baneling is a, is a controversial, uh, complicated figure in the game. Um, completely agreed. So, yeah. and I mean, we'll really, see. what we're doing here is, if if you had these changes, uh, ignore the first one, but if you had these changes at the start of Legacy, it would be considered a Baneling buff, because Banelings didn't get. Uh, I want to say with th- Legacy was when they got the the centrifugal hook HP change. It was patch three eight. Um, really. So now it's like ah, Banelings are faster and they're cheaper, or Baneling speed is faster and cheaper. This is great. <laughs> so, you know, I guess obviously other things have changed too, but. Yeah, I was gonna say I think they also changed the way the damage bonus yes, works because it that used is to be true. that has happened it used to in be later higher patches. damage versus armored. It used to be it used to be higher overall damage, and yeah, now it's mostly yeah. on light. Yeah. yeah, and now they're like, haha, get fucked. <laughs> now it's even less on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now onto the Protoss. We do have the forward shield upgrade cost reduced. Again, the reasoning is that it's less useful than attack armor. Um, current help like change, it. help increase cost. I, I do think this is a little bit different than the Spire, though, mm-hmm. because okay. this is the only third upgrade that any race mm. can get in StarCraft. That, and it applies to literally every unit a Protoss has. Yeah. In my yeah, mind, but it's also, a, it's also a lesser change. Um, it's 25 minerals, system. 25 gas, 50 minerals, 50 gas, and that's at level 2, level 3. This is a great change. This is oh, a great this change. Is this is same right change. in line with uh, oh. air armor, for Protoss, air armor for Zerg, this is a good change. I yeah, mean, and like, yeah, I agree with Jess, but but also at this point in the game where you're like actively getting those, like the cost doesn't matter that much. So so for me, like what yes. it does is it offers like the option where you know like maybe you can sometimes go shields because it's just overpriced. So it's not a choice. So mm. I prefer choices. And I guess I didn't realize that this was um it was really only plus three that has the significant change. Plus one and plus two are yeah kind of the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, pretty uh, pretty decent approach. Because um, plus one shields, I'd actually say, is actually very much a, a choice mm-hmm. in, like, ZVP. Um, mm, yeah. But then the later we go, the less important it is. So, yeah, yeah another one of those ones was kind of initially, I was like, eh, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized its flippancy is warranted. Um, same with Cyber Next Core. Then, same thing for the Spire, right? Air mm-hmm. armor, because they're less yeah. useful, yep. so they yeah, reduce it. Sure. No one has an issue. War Prism minimap radius increased. It now is standardized with all the other units we talked about. I think it's fine. Um, <clears throat> mostly Whoa. a quality of life thing, but you know, a slight nerf to all these like hidden backstabs is okay in my opinion as well. Oh yeah, no, I, I I think anything that rewards you looking at it and seeing it is a good thing. Like I don't think you should look at the minimap and be like, oh man, this dot went over a weird part of the map that like. For whatever reason, the pixels looked weird, and it's just when I happened to look, and oh, now there's 12 zealots in my base. Ha! <laughs> GG, great game. Let's go again. Uh, no, like why? Why the fuck not? It's good. It's good. Yeah, the deep seated trauma. Yeah, um, I have it too. Don't worry. <laughs> so onto the up, up to onto the the things that I really don't, I'm not happy with for the Protoss. So first of all, they yeah. disrupt there. And I, <laughs> I, I wanted to go find the quote, but I don't think I'll have time. But someone quoted a comment. So it's like a quote of a quote. But it's like, uh, goal, disruptors should not be the only unit viable in late game PVT. What do we do? Get rid of disruptors. No, <laughs> now nothing is viable. There we now go. Nothing is viable. It was something along the lines of that. But it was it, very, um, you're reading this 
like you expect something else to be changed to benefit mm. and nothing happens. It is yeah. just a nerf to something that Protoss desperately needs. <laughs> it's Immortal very CG. odd. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the disruptor but, I mean, supply cost changed, which I kind of agree with. Model scale reduced and radius increased <clears throat> on the model is what I assumed there. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So so yeah, like like I agree with you, and this is where I think that a lot of the community like reads this change and in a vacuum, like yeah, like I think yeah, we would all vacuum, have to yeah. agree that like, you need that. But if you go back to the Terran changes, then you see that now Templars are more viable, right? So they do actually. It's the thing is that they're not listed under Protoss, right? So people are like, where's where's my where's my option? Where's the rest of it? It was at the top because like ghosts are are considerably worse, and Templars are by uh, b b you know by association just better. So, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. For me, I mean, I think probably for all of us as, a co as commentators, Disruptors are one of the most exciting units, at least for me. Like, I love yelling about him. It's kind of sad, but it's kind of like the baneling of the Protoss from a perceptual uh, standpoint where everyone always complains about it and how volatile things get. So I understand it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like the way they went about it, but, but I get it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm more worried about ZVP, actually. I... I... Because I, I see all these changes to Sky Toss, and I'm see less viability for Ground Toss is is kind of how this is working out. Um, in PvP, though, this is a buff, right? The disruptors they don't clump near. I, I don't think they clump quite as much, so that makes it uh, you're less likely to eat all your disruptors with one disruptors. I think how this is going to work. I don't know well, if it. Yeah. I don't well, know. Well, I haven't had a chance to take a look at see the space. Yeah, we have to look at it. I I think it's about yeah. the same, but it looks less less silly, is my understanding because they used to clump up like really, like it was difficult yeah. to tell how many there are and stuff like that, right? So, uh, the thing is, the thing is in ground toss, like uh, it's going to be easier to deal with banelings. So I'm not actually concerned about ground toss struggling. Uh, like they're going to have less HP. They're going to do... Is there anything that they affect in terms of attack? You know what? Actually, oh, this is interesting. Uh, plus two melee banes will no longer two shot high templar. Is that that's right? Yeah. Are high templar because high like templar are forty range. HP, forty shields. Let me look it up. Banelings. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'll need plus three melee, but it's the same trick where if you have two armor upgrades or any combination of two in shield or armor, now the high templar survive a little bit longer. I'm trying to think if there's any other light units that will be affected by it similarly the zealot is not going to make too much of a difference but the banelings are the only unit you actually run through an army so that actually could make it a little bit easier to keep your high templar alive uh yeah 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 no no i don't i don't think there's any problem with uh ground toss zvp uh oh, when you take into account all the other like changes this is just going to make it feel less shitty to play zerg uh in that particular instance where you're like oh i didn't split against the disruptors because I I haven't been taught to because I didn't play tough race like Terran and now I I lost my army. Yeah, I mean that's the criticism for disruptors is they're too volatile, too binary, and yeah, I mean like I I again I can't subscribe to it, I can't back this change, but I understand where they're coming from. So I'm gonna have to see it. I think is is the the thing the is it, it doesn't even look that different. They just they're just bigger. They're just bigger and more inconvenient to build because you need one extra. They're smaller. Supply, they're like. smaller. They're smaller. Yeah. Smaller scale. Uh, they're smaller, they're smaller but they so they clump, they clump less. less. Yeah. So oh yeah. Sorry. They're gonna place. look bigger. They're gonna no, no, look no, they're gonna look, no. They're gonna look smaller. Look smaller. Their model size is nine percent smaller. Yeah. It's just um, they won't they won't like clump up as much, so it'll yeah. be easier easier to tell them apart. Yeah. That sorry. Yeah. When I say look bigger, I mean they'll occupy less space visually. Yeah. Or more space. They'll occupy more space visually. Yeah. Possibly or about the same. Yeah, I was watching uh, Skillis do it, and they they like it. They occupied more surface area on the ground. Okay. I think is that yeah. was just a very quick glance, though. Mm -hmm. But no, per yeah, model, you're you're probably right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, they they. Them, yeah. I have them up right now. They they are a little um. They're not very heavily spaced, but yeah, they're a little bit bigger. Well, more more space because they 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 don't they don't cluster in on each other as much. They yeah, actually yeah, have it's, a clear, it's more visually each, clear, which is what yeah. they're aiming for, which is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Each bounding box is just um, a little bit has has some separation. I do want to say I really wish that they would sh could or would I don't know if it, if they even can at this point change the animation of the disruptor to make it look more clear 
when a disruptor is ready to fire versus when it's not. That is something, that is what I initially read this as, and I was very excited about it. And then I realized that's mm. not what it was. And I got very depressed. We'll Did you see Omni Skeptics Twitter thread about like quality of life for disruptors? Negative. Uh, where effectively no. what he was pushing for out of this um, is that he wants, so like when you box select an army that has disruptors and Nova, where that has di disruptor Novas and the army, he wants the box select to, sele to select the, the Novas at the exclusion of other things. So you're not going to like box select your army and then accidentally blow up all your, uh, blow up all your zealots. No, that's hilarious. I'm just kidding. But I, I don't know that you should reward bad play. Like, I, I don't think you should reward bad play. I think if you, I think if you mess up with the disruptors, like you should, um, like that's, that's the risk reward is like they're a high skill cap unit. You need to have high skill to use yeah. them. That's fair. Mm. Yeah. Feel the yeah, Viper is yeah. also a high school unit, high school unit, you know, you really need a lot of skill. <laughs> unit. You should be, you Maybe should you be should allowed to kill your units on accident. On <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean the, the disruptor. I think I think it's a little bit of an over nerf for for the maybe for uh, PVC because I don't, I don't think it was particularly oppressive there, but it's no. warranted for PV for PVT. And like no. yeah, it's also like cost of supply is twelve point five as well, so it increases. It's not just the amount that you can have, but also like the the cost per disruptor. Right? We were talking about the ultra list changes, one circling. This is half a circling effectively, and yeah, more attention <laughs> as well, and not getting supply mm. blocked as a result. Here's the difference, though, with the disruptor nerf, when that happens on a pro game, because we're all commentators here, when that happens in a pro game, we're like, oh, shit, that's fucking hilarious. Look at that idiot. But when somebody loses, you know, kills their own building, we don't notice till much later. Yeah, and then we're like, that's, that's oh, sad. that's so sad. As a, oh, so we like, definitely had some moments. Like, I can think of a cast that you and I steadfast. We're like, holy shit. Wait, are we actually comparing it to the Viper change? This, uh, yeah, let's, let's just go to the void, right? Move on. We void on there. Better. Okay. Zombie Grub made a joke. Steadfast going to over explain why it doesn't actually uh, be an analogy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but I, I do think we need to move on to from the disruptor. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the point is that it, it kind of just got nerfed, basically. And uh, it, but but it doesn't, you know, it, 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 it there's nothing else helping Protoss in the same position that they need to disrupt there. So Impress. it's very odd. Um, <clears throat> okay, next up is the Void Ray. Prismatic alignment move speed with flux veins <laughs> increase from 2.62 to 3.49. So a pretty heavy increase. Um, and that also helps the bug mm. that existed. Yeah, I just yeah. Well, yeah. it's it's a bug and it's also a buff. Or sorry, it's a bug fix and it's a buff. Yes, Ooh, but it, yeah, yeah. both of them at the same time. Um, it it also content. depends on how you view it because people were like people were making the argument, and I think it's a valid one. That but I also hate it conceptually. Maybe um, that prismatic alignment. Uh, should increase the, or sorry, flux vein should increase the speed while you're prismatically aligned because right now this brings it in line with the percentage buff. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. But it does increase it. It does increase it. Yeah, that's just, it yeah. didn't used to, but now it does. And yeah, I think with the per it is valid. a percentage increase that is in alignment with. Yeah. Oh, wait, um, is that literally the exact thing that it used to be? It used so, to be 3.49 with flux no, veins? No, 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 no. It's buffed. No, no. So, oh, okay. So it these is, are two okay, separate so things. So it is the buff and the buff. And this confused okay, me at yeah, first, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, the context here is now three point. The prismatically aligned flux vein void rays are as fast as non flux veined there regular void rays that's that nice, aren't prismatically yeah. aligned, give mm -hmm. or take. So fucking fast. Yeah, that's they're very fast. fast. But like, what do you do with it? Like, it says more micro here, but I mean, in every situation except like the only situation that I could, that I could think of uh, was parasitic bomb. Basically, is where you would want to split, which is cool. I think that's nice. In every other situation that uh, that I think of using void rays on micro in them, I am shift clicking, and it's going to help a little bit to move from unit to unit a little bit faster. But for the most part, like it lists micro here. I don't think it does much for micro outside of parasitic bomb. But yeah, voids aren't really fine. a unit that benefit from like stutter step. Well, <laughs> I, I'm not so much worried about that as I'm really worried about uh, two things. One, that this is an anti-fun change and could bring back vo mass void ray at the mm. lower levels, which would just oh. be shitty for the latter. That just, it just ruins people's fun. Um, but that probably won't be a big issue. And, and is that the biggest thing? Maybe, maybe not. Um, the bigger thing, the actual balance of it is like now when corruptors try and engage and force out prismatic alignment, you're going to lose like, that's four true. or five more Good corruptors point. in late oh, game ZVP. Yeah, yeah. 
number that's a, that's that's a big deal. Right. Yeah. Realistically, like you can run away with with uh, prismatically aligned void rays, and not like what this means. I think more than anything, it means you don't have to turn off prismatic alignment to disengage. Well, you should places. still because you'll be considerably faster if you're looking to disengage for sure. But but to your point, I mean, yeah, there's there's situations where, like for example, with parasitic bomb, like you wouldn't select that void ray and do the extra actions, you would just split it, like, and that would probably be good enough, right? Like, if it's, like, single unit micro type, type stuff like that. I don't I have it's... a strong opinion on the individual unit. I'm just looking at the units that they are trying to change, and they're all the most yeah. annoying... Yeah. Yeah. Problematic yeah. units. Well, well, this is fine. Quality they haven't touched life. the carrier, so there's that. I think the carrier has the most fun potential, though, rather compared to a Tempest. Or avoid, right? Uh, I, 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 I hate the carrier far more than I hate the Tempest. Same. Yeah, yeah but yeah. you're not a Terran. Can't you don't get proxy Tempested. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Can't believe how wrong you are. Yeah, no, That's I get seven minutes. crazy. You know, two carrier pushed instead. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. No, the carrier being more fun kind of just has its roots and its potential from brute war. Like, there's a lot of potential for the carrier, which is why the community, True. like, banded together to make sure it wasn't deleted from Heart mm -hmm. of the Swarm. So... Uh, like I'm a big believer in what it can do. I'm not saying it is the best unit. I actually think that basically what my problems are going to boil down to is that Protoss is a heavily problematic race to balance, not just as far as like winning versus losing, but foundational gameplay versus gimmicky gameplay. Mm. And that's why they're so hard to balance as far as pros winning as well why there's so many pros uh semi-pros and pros but not championship winning pros like they go hand yep. in hand for me uh so whenever i see capital ships uh stargate units like the void ray and the tempest and the mothership get buffed or get placed more importance on to to fix other problems like they're they're weak in late games evp they're weak at defending things in the early game or the mid game or whatever the reason is I immediately clench up. I immediately go, oh God, what cheese? Oh God, mm -hmm. how many late games EVPs? Oh God. Yeah. Oh yeah. Jesus. Um, yeah. And I don't like it. So the you know, Void Ray specific implications, I don't know. But overall, I, I would like more of the changes that we see at the end mm -hmm. to the Century Oracle and Immortal, which yeah. we'll get to. Mm, I love uh, those. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Those that'll, that'll be my comment for the Void Ray. As well as my comment for the Tempest, I think, again, moving a siege unit into a faster type of unit um, and, and trying to make that a unit that, like, fixes problems. It's just, like, it just... Mm. Yeah. You're telling me like, you don't like the units that ignore how a map works? Well. You're, you're telling me you don't like the units that <laughs> ignore foundational RTS components? Yeah. yeah, like, I think, I think you are spot on. Like, I think that that's right. And if we were to design the game from the, from the beginning, I think that that would be the approach. I think that the problem is they're looking at a, like, if, you know, we're criticizing the cyclone because of how early it comes and how big the change is. I think that's the level of change that we would require to change the foundations. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, the higher tier units are more obviously like, okay, like, you can look at and kind of guess that Zerg wins the majority of late games. So how do we fix that? Well, we fix the late game units, like to some degree, right? Mm -hmm. Like we buff mm -hmm. the void rays at the best. So it's the it's the easiest path. Yeah. And and it makes sense just because we don't like they're not paid. They, they you don't you're not designing a game from scratch. It's just mm -hmm. kind of like band aids. Yeah. So Cat, uh, can I have you confirm right now that that uh, zero space will not have carriers in it? Our uh, our air units are pretty weak, and I want them to be mostly <laughs> support. Yeah. Nice. No, you don't have to actually answer that. <laughs> that's okay um the tempest size model change is going to make it a little bit more difficult to abduct them you have to put the viper just a little bit further forward true that's yeah. it the acceleration deceleration twice as fast is that's pretty nutty. big that's huge literally twice that's as nutty. fast um i really don't think they should be touching that although and, and is it as Oh, People's right. common response and the actual explanation they gave is the feeling of actively microing Tempest. Guess what? You got a unit that won't feel good to micro because it's tier <laughs> three siege. Right. That's what happens. If you I wanted something tanks. to feel fun microing, make fucking stalkers. I don't see yeah. why we have to make things more like other things. Did, just... did you know that lurkers need to be more microable? 
Yeah, yeah right. It's the same <laughs> argument throughout all the all the big units. It's like better for gameplay in some sense. Like it's snappier, but it's worse for like the you know the general feel of how the unit like looks and how it probably activates and like the lore and you know. Yeah, I just I always think of like how awkward a raven is to use because even though I play a lot of Protoss, I'm still like Terran minded first and foremost. No. And I don't, yeah, and I, <laughs> I and I hate Zerg. Fuck those guys. Um. But you know, the, the, the Raven is really awkward to use. And should they approach changing it, uh, its awkwardness, that, w- that would be kind of like a nice like covert buff or nerf, whatever they decide to do. But I don't sit there saying the Raven is too difficult to use. It needs mm. to feel like a fucking Marine. Like, that's just insane. That's insane. And mm. so when a Viking gives me a pleasurable feeling of micro because it has a range and a turn point radius that's pretty nice, I'm like, yeah. But it has these other downsides. I don't need the Raven to be like a Viking. I don't need the Raven to be like a Marine. Well, I don't need the Tempest to feel better microing. It's already a CG unit that's extra clumsy. That's kind of what it's designed to do. That's its downside and its upside. So I, I have issues. Yeah. Although, is the is doubling the the acceleration deceleration as bad as uh, increasing the acceleration deceleration by about three by about three hundred percent? Because that's what they did to the mothership. Oh, I see. Took me a second, but I, 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 I was think, also that was, like, <laughs> "That's it's way more than three hundred percent. It's like three thousand percent." Yeah, isn't sorry, it? by by thirty fold. Or, my bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, yeah. I, hold I, on. It's like a so, factor of some twenty. Uh, Someone highlighted that they sped up Broodlords. This is why they sped up Tempest. When we talked about the Broodlords, we said they sped up Broodlords because they sped up the Tempest. <laughs> so, like, yeah. And on, by the way, <laughs> and <laughs> on top of this, they didn't speed up the Tempest. They sped up the Tempest turn rate or acceleration yes, deceleration. Yeah. Those are different things. But, uh, yeah, but different. again, again, from gameplay perspective, it's a good band-aid, right? Because Tempest are yeah. easily easier to abduct. Like it's the late game that we're discussing. Like Protoss is like not favored there. Like I, I think it makes sense. It's just not. It's just not as pretty as we would like it to be, for sure. On it, I'm with I'm with cats more so than anything on this, to be honest. Like it, it's. It does seem like it will address some issues, but yeah, I feel I feel bad for Terrans on the ladder that are gonna get proxy tempested. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And be like, why did I lose to this? And it's like it's a Oh, they don't have to... any cyclones anymore either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To deal with that, that's funny. I wonder if they thought uh, about that. Not for them. But it is you know, funny. Shout out right. to that one time when Tempests were supposed to be speedy harassment units. I don't know if that change ever went through, but it, was that Ooh, a Legacy right, of the Void beta change? Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, they can, um, there was they at least proposed that Tempest yeah. should be like really fast. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember. I don't remember. I remember. I mean, at one like point the Warhound range. existed, shorter so shorter range and faster. Is what it was, I think. And the Replicator. <laughs> hey, yeah. would you like to buy a siege tank for one point six six times the cost of a siege tank? No. Well, we've got the Replicator for you. No. Well, we're making it anyways. Get fucked. Please don't put it in the game. Yeah. Okay, we're no. taking the Replicator out. In um in they patch the four seven one, they 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 got a movement speed of three, which was uh whatever this was. Uh, they had a movement speed of three point five and an uh, acceleration deceleration rate um at like red run three. So they were very fast. <laughs> they were very speedy, and then they they got they did away with that over the next couple patches. Mm-hmm. Which was uh, in 2018, for what it's worth. Okay, mothership. Yes. Yes, I actually talk about the mothership. So the mothership is one of the things that got a complete redesign. Yeah. Now, I understand the redesign of this a little bit more because the mothership has always been a complicated unit. It basically mm-hmm. it exists to be abducted. Um, <clears throat> however, I still would say that this is like, as I think Katz has really helped me think this through. The later the stage a, a unit is, the less impactful it is, right? So you're really, mm-hmm. it's like the Band-Aid is a Band-Aid. It's literally surface wound. Mm-hmm. It is a scratch on a bullet hole. And the Mothership getting changed feels like that again, which is like, I see your point. It's an obnoxious scratch. You probably should put a Band-Aid of some type on it. But this is really not fixing my bullet hole. That is the Protoss race. Could you, could you maybe look at that instead? Um, so, and, and then I also just abhor the idea of going anywhere close back to a mothership core. I fucking hated that unit. And this is getting closer to that. I that it isn't yeah. that, but <laughs> yeah. it is closer actually, to that. Like when I was reading like some of the <clears throat> ideas and changes that they were going for because of the scope, I thought, why not just bring the mothership core as a, as a model? Because it's, you know, now, now you have a very, like a smaller mothership that does less stuff and it just doesn't feel the fit the fantasy so for me that's 
that's one of the bigger issues is just like changing the game for casuals, for campaign, for co-op, even like and on how the units feel. Because you've gotten used to them, you, you've gotten them used to how they feel and like the epicness of the larger units. And we're kind of just ignoring that in, in favor of just snappier gameplay, which I appreciate as a player. I'll enjoy it more. But yeah, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know it from that perspective. ZG, can you pull up the footage of uh, how the mothership moves now? I actually love this. this. I've changed, by the way. I, I, put, the, I is... put the link to the tweet mm -hmm. in, uh, in our group chat. I think this is a top three <laughs> set of it patch. Is... It's insane. Cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll take a look at uh, we'll take a look at this meme before we mm -hmm. before why I get into why I Fair like. Fair warning: it, the music on the video oh, is no. loud, so just mute it. But um, it's not okay. even a meme because that's just how it works. <laughs> okay, I, I mean it can be how it works and still be a meme. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Like it, it's not a meme. <laughs> as in, like people are saying that like are overemphasizing. No, this is mm -hmm. this is just the change. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen this yet, so I'm excited. So, yeah the the mothership has always moved like a science vessel. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, this is it, still like, pretty clunky. Like, this is still yeah. not. I mean, look at those turns. That's yeah, smaller, but right? they tried... but it means that like now it's now it can pass its driver's ed course, <laughs> you know, with like yeah. only thirty demerits instead of literally running over every pedestrian on the highway like this this just this brings it up to being a unit that doesn't feel like absolute shit yeah i mean it's a mothership and it's an entire city i'm okay if it has some inertia right. yeah but the amount that it had before like god damn that unit was bad it was that was a fucking meme i actually bad. it was great it was still useful right like the always cloak field and stuff like that but it was oh, too no, no, easy no, to yeah. abduct like the meme was warranted in that like you know it was very binary like either it does too much in the fight or you abduct it and you kill it and it does absolutely nothing type thing I no know. i was just, i was just talking about the uh specifically the maneuverability i actually do think i you and i are like the only two commentators i feel like that are like the mothership's actually a good unit it's good cool, um, yeah it yeah, was, it just, yeah it's underutilized I, I, yeah i think that but for me this is just awesome i think this is just so good uh you make it more accessible you make it cost less. You make it cost less supply. Uh, it's a little bit faster. It's a lot more maneuverable. It's weaker to compensate. It's smaller. Like, you've, th this is actually, this is how they should have done any redesign, in my opinion. Uh, I love that it no longer costs energy, so you can't feedback it. You can't EMP it. Uh, recall is now a cooldown-based spell. Is it too short? Maybe. We'll see. Too many changes to tell for sure. Time warp. Time warp is actually a real spell now. You can't just run away from Time Warp because it takes almost two That's seconds to actually warp. activate. It actually goes down and will be impactful. Now, <laughs> is that too close to the old Mothership Core? Maybe, but we will be able to see this. I think this is actually a very viable mid-game unit in PVT now, or like early stage of the late game, late stage of the mid-game. Mm -hmm. uh, I think yeah. it's going to be a really cool high-impact play, and I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity to make plays with the Mothership. Yeah. And... I'm happy that Cloaking Field is no longer a permanent because I think that was corny as hell. I think in the context of an individual unit, I agree with you steadfast. I, I'm excited to see what players are going to be able to do with this. That being said, as ZG is talking about, in the context of all these move towards Sky Toss, it does not spark joy. Yeah, but this is not like a super ultra late game, I win everything with Sky Toss Mothership. Yeah. This, is, this is a scaled down Mothership. Yeah, but like, like theoretically, a, this is again another. This you could potentially. I don't, I don't know how the meta is going to evolve, uh, but you could treat this as a kind of another mid, mid to late game like sky toss transitional unit, right? Yeah, you can get it earlier on. It, then it it kind of it's one of those things that can aid you in that transition in, into late game in, into the mm -hmm. full sky fleet. The other thing that's cool is now when you see a mothership on its own, you won't just be like, hey. Does that mothership, is it on its own? Or are there 15 void rays underneath or six carriers underneath unless they activate the cloaking field already? That's better. So yeah. it's, it's not going to be guesswork for, and, and granted that shouldn't affect, you know, play at the absolute highest level, but it's just, it makes the unit feel less like, <clears throat> less like you're losing to an idiot horse when it beats you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um my my problem 
foundation problem. You know, I already gave that one. But my other problem is just that I really hate the idea of hero units in StarCraft. Um, and whether this is used a lot or a little, I don't even want to make a guess on. I just want to envision what's going to happen, which is that it's going to be one very important unit to the Protoss mid-game, I suppose, in late game. And it's going to have the same like basic issue which is that like, there's one it's a hero unit it's easily targetable it's easily abductable even with the speed less boost less and less stuff less. um and it uh will feel very gimmicky when people just like recall to it and recall out of it and the cloak will go on it just like it, nothing about the mothership in its current form excites me and i was okay with it because it basically doesn't have to it just exists to die but if you make the mothership something that's actually going to be apparent in every single game, like the mothership core was, I'm going to hate it. Just like I hated the mothership core. Uh, I think that, you know, pulling, pushing Protoss to depend heavily on a single unit uh, when it already is so high quality, low quantity, just further uh, exacerbates the issues that it, that it has as a race. Um, and that's why I wanted to see more foundational changes like the Century Oracle and Immortal changes. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, Hard again. Yeah. Just, just, just more difficult and like to be a most point as well. Like, yeah, like it can be used in a transition into the late game, like in the mid late game, like Steadfast was saying. But, but it's not like Protoss, like saying CVP, like if Protoss wants to turtle and get there, they'll get there, right? Like it's, it's just kind of an issue of, yeah. It, I, I don't think it changes much outside of like the potential balance for a lot of these units, right? Like where Zerg is winning much or, or more in the late game and Protoss is not winning as much. So here's your answer in that area type thing. Rather than saying, "Hey, you should go to late game." Like if they want to, they already do, right? Like it's just kind of, mm -hmm. it's just kind of like increasing their power in that in that area, and it doesn't change the early and mid game that much, right? You still have to play with the same units leading up to late game. Um, the yeah. only way that that changes is this. if the hydro <laughs> if the hydro buff goes through. There we go. They're no, never I, I see it. <laughs> and I, you know, I see where you're coming from. I, I guess at the end of the day, my my big issue is that I, I hate seeing so much of the power budget in flying units. Yeah. Yeah, it's just kind yeah. of at the end of the day, that's my big. Oh, I don't like it's that. just the simple. It's just the simple yeah. solution, I think. Especially considering that I, I like the more that other RTSs are like, actually, we want to shy away from sky units. Mm -hmm. The more I'm like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I, I, I see the point. Yeah, okay, okay. It yeah. matter. <laughs> Here's yeah. why that's an issue. Um, They're boring, right? Like they have no <laughs> like the no pathing constraints, like you said. It's just like mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But it, yeah, it's where we are. Yeah, um, but as far as a attempt to like game change and make things exciting, like I can't argue that that's a good change for that. Uh, yeah, so that's fair. Yeah, uh, we'll move on to the the. I just basically ran through these and was like, yes, yes, yes. A century guardian shield duration increased. I'm totally fine with that. Yes, good. Yeah, okay. make the yeah. century better. Oracle stasis ward sight range increased four to seven. Totally fine Great. with that. Uh, Fantastic change. Excellent change. Be almost, be almost uh, change. Okay, why don't you like it? So, well, first of all, Protoss already have one invisible map control observing unit. It's called an observer. And yes, it is a part of a different tech tree, but again, decisions. On top of that, the point of an Oracle, because I think this changed more than anything, is focused at PVT. Um, and the Oracle yeah. in that matchup is a vision map control unit. You're not going to kill a lot of STBs, but you will be dropping revelations everywhere. Oracles will be active. If I, I don't think that, I don't think more vision is ne mm. is a necessary thing here i think this is a little bit like the viper change and like on the same vein where it's like yeah like if you don't have the vision you might miss it and the big you know good players don't miss it but the vision range is so so small that it kind of helps like newer players or players that don't have the attention to spare to have a little bit more of a heads up as far as like what where, where their traps are getting triggered and I, stuff like that I think yeah nice. i, I just... think this is oh sorry Vaughn. As far as the race, I mean, if they're on the Stargate path, they're on the Stargate path for a while. And very mm -hmm. rarely do you go, like, well, both Oracle into Robo. You go Phoenix into Robo, but regardless, like, in giving them a easier scouting tool on that path, I actually have no qualms with. I really yeah, do. Yeah, and this, um, I think this like... matches the Widowmine now, too. <laughs> or it's, it makes it so that, because Widowmines give a shit ton of vision on the map, too, right? Like, oh, they give okay, a ton so... of vision a lot more than the Stasis Ward. Um, this actually, this, this also has a, uh, hilarious result that I just thought of too, which is before Protoss players would never see an army pass by with a stasis ward and realize that it just missed right. their stasis ward. Now, Protoss players will feel the pain of having that, 
having that stasis ward <laughs> just miss a gigantic Terran army. And that is so fucking funny. Although you, you talk about <laughs> committing the state, like not having access to Robotech all that much longer. I would argue that what like the big benefit, well, one of the big benefits of going Stargate is map control and vision and scouting. Like that is one of the things you're opting into by going Stargate play. Yeah. That is like but... you lose that a little bit. Yes, you have observers, but they're slower and you only can get so many of them because robo build time is a thing. Like that's one of the trade-offs. You have a more powerful ground army, you go robo, you have a lot more vision and map control and I mean, I, I guess as I'm, I'm saying this, I'm talking myself out of it because we talked about identity and play right. styles, and this and does game. play more into that vision map control identity play style. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm talking myself out of it. Never it's mind. it's also just something that I don't think is really spammable. Like if I was if That's I fair. if if yeah. Oracle if triple Oracle was super common in ZV, um, PVT, uh, or you know mass Oracle, God forbid that ever comes back. Then I'd be like, no, <laughs> there's enough. Calm down. But when I think mm. about an oracle in, in the matchup, I think about one oracle in the Twilight Council, maybe. Maybe okay. three oracle, like two oracle or three depths, or whatever it is, like maybe that harassment. Um, but yeah, I really think that there's already like a a change of style when the Protoss player moves to placing down stasis wards. You know? Like yeah. they're moving away from using that oracle actively because it's getting into the later game. They're moving okay. away mm. from being able to revelate everything that's happening because there's multiple drops. So mm. encouraging what they do end up still using their oracle for and, and putting their APM into that and their skill into that, I think is good. Yeah, this this rewards <laughs> active play. This is this is a, a good play, and I okay. I like it a lot. I agree. You've uh you've convinced me. Hmm. Uh, and then the Immortal Barrier will now also block the first instance of damage. Uh, this is basically an EMP fix. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this, this is a, this a bug effective. fix as far as I... As far basically, as I yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess so. I, I can't believe they actually didn't say, like, this is a bug fix, because this is a bug fix. It should have never worked like that, yeah. It was just like a yeah. bad design decision that they're fixing, so that's good. Uh, this also affects more than just the situation they're talking about. This also makes disruptors slightly worse against Immortals. Thanks, uh, and I say slightly, but it's actually significant in the one instance it can come up, which is like PvP, one base, all ins, where they went proxy robo and then transitioned into disruptors. And then the disruptors, uh, you know, you only have like two or three disruptors, and you know, your opponent's defending with immortals and a war prism. Like it just it it's a very niche situation, but it it's good that it'll work the way it's intended. I would have liked to have seen bigger changes on the Immortal, mm. which I mean is, I guess, kind of overall maybe a boring unit. But as StarCraft has become faster and more complicated and generally better across the board, I've had less issues with such units as the Colossus and the Immortal. Like Wings of Liberty Colossus was the stupidest fucking thing. I hated it. But now I'm like, it's okay, Colossus. Something nice, <laughs> something that you can bring home to your parents. You know, like that's okay. We need that for Protoss here. And I so think I'm they hearing the Protoss are settling. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> so look, okay, they're either going to go back to their abusive partner that's fucking hitting them all the time. That is Protoss currently, or they're going to settle for a couple of things. <laughs> and the settling is right here, right in the Immortal and the Colossus, in my opinion. So I, I would have liked to see the Colossus range uh, added in. Um, but because they are nerfing the Matrix so hard, maybe it'll not be okay. Yeah. Um, and then I like the Immortal as a, as a real backbone option to a mass gateway army that we were seeing some experimentation with from the likes of Hero, but nothing concrete enough, um, especially when the EMPs came out, which have also been somewhat addressed. So, mm. yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. The, like in combination, this change to the immortal is actually, I mean, it's actually really big. Like in PVT, like this is this is just gonna strengthen, like you said, the backbone of the the army. Like as a or as a backbone unit, like it's going to strengthen it, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, Someone asked way, me what the problem was with Colossus and Liberty. I don't have time to get into it. Um, can, I, can, I, can I take like five seconds to grandstand ZG? Sure, go ahead. Someone asked why the, they don't see the point of the Raven nerf because Colossus aren't used anyways. Do we, do we see the correlation here? We don't need OSHA because no one died on the construction site in the last year. Sorry? We don't need OSHA because no one's died on the construction site in the exactly. last year. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, 
Do we see? <clears throat> ah, sorry. Okay, go ahead. That's my, that's my five second grandstanding. Good. That was beautiful. I appreciated it. I saw a guy who was definitely a like a like a construction worker wearing a, a shirt that said "Defund OSHA." And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yes, you don't All want right. your right foot. <laughs> All these things are written in blood, but that's fine. That's okay. Um. <clears throat> anyway, but yeah, I absolutely. If we nerf the Raven, we're going to see more Colossus viability. And you know, people were already using Colossus rather well, despite how difficult it was. I would say I, I've been thoroughly impressed with the Protoss's attempts to make do with, you know, sticks and rocks for the last <laughs> six years. You know, I went oh, from no, fucking no. hating them in the first two expansions and thinking they were the worst designed race and everyone sucked and every part of their unit design sucked and they're so boring and then they're so gimmicky to being like, I like the approach. And now I've just been sympathetic for them for like six years. <laughs> Since like 2017, I've been like, Protoss, come here. I don't know, ZG, you know, I have, I have, too, I have too much trauma in my brain from like so, getting soul trained to death for days at a time to ever mm. truly feel bad. But I guess I'm yeah, I guess I'm more neutral at least. <laughs> yeah. How many how many tournament wins uh, do I, will it take before you change your tune back? CG. How like do you, one, I, I think I think one, one is all it's going to take. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Because I also love PvP. <laughs> is the thing PvP is great like so I, I know for a fact that the community will turn on protoss as soon as they have top four protoss in gsl 100 percent. where people were kind of they were kind of letting that one go for tv 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 t in gsl last season like they were like this is a problem but we'll move on like it really didn't stick but i know for a fact if protoss had four players oh yeah, yeah. in top four or top eight or top 12 people would still be like well hold on we might be giving them too much. <laughs> and if it was only top four Protoss, there'd be cries every which way we look. Um, and far more. You have the to be fair, by the way. When we talk about this discourse, <laughs> I mean, Protoss pretty much in the majority of Legacy have not had their full cohort of top level players. They've always had yeah. someone, someone or some two in military. And, and I love that people bring up MC winning the Legends tournament as proof that we've really just <laughs> we're just lacking <laughs> good Protoss yes, players. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> like how how, and, how much did mma practice you know you like know, he, hero uh you know throwing games stupidly is not helping their cause either like creator, i understand that point of view, one last year. but overall i would say because because there are so many good protoss and this has gone on for now two years that like europe for instance has been top 20 players or like 13 protosses like it's an insane amount Mm. The their lack of breaking forth is it must be an issue with the race. You I really can't Bucks, blame though. every single Protoss. Max Bax, he doesn't yeah. attend offline tournaments. Yeah, <laughs> at some point, at some point, he seemed to be you know like beating Clem and Rainer and uh, he he two zero Mar yesterday. yesterday. He's yeah he's and got a perhaps, he's got a fort. Perhaps if he ap appeared in offline, he would you know be a lot bigger of a of a um, torch carrier. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, but for right now. It doesn't seem to be impactful enough. Mm -hmm. Like so, someone else should be able to, to to stand up that actually do go to offline tournaments. Yeah, it should be hero, but he's so inconsistent. Classic just came back from the military. I feel like he's been improving very fast. He's but yeah, it would be <laughs> Max Pax or Hero and yeah. Max Pax isn't there. I, I also do feel like, you know, I was actually talking to Artosis about this at Gamers 8. Um, because he was saying that Crater was going to win versus Serral, or was it Classic? <laughs> it, it was one of those. I, I think it was well, Crater. Classic did two one Serral, so okay, so it was Crater because Crater did end up winning. He almost won. He was probably supposed to win, but he didn't. So yeah. it was Crater. So Crater, he, he actually said Crater was going to win, and, and Roddy, like you know, just laughing at him the entire time. Yeah. And then he almost won. Anyway, but that... I, when this was being discussed, him and him and Roddy were having a little giggle. Uh -huh. I looked up Serral's stats in the last two years of StarCraft 2. He had something like an 86% win record versus Protoss. In two years. If you look I... at another example, Cure's win rate versus Protoss in the last two years is also insanely high. I don't think as impressive, but it's also insanely high. Do we have an example of any other player against any other race right. having such a high win record? But I don't think I... we do. Yeah, what but was if I traps? Like it, CVP versus or PBT? It was like 76% all-timer or something like that, right? At least it was at one point. 
Oh, Protoss the reason is more I remember, consistent uh, in general, right? Like, pr like Protoss is like reliant more on tricks and stuff like that. So, like, I feel like Serral loses when he gets tricked sometimes. But I think the thing is, Serral, in my mind, is the best late game player in the world, especially in CVP. So mm. it's like, if you're the best and every other Protoss is okay beating everyone else, or like at least having a very solid shot at winning in the in the late game, except you know for Serral, maybe Dark at some point. Then, then it becomes so that it's not effective for any other protos to try to beat Serral in the late game. But also, whenever you face him, you have to get out of your comfort zone because if you're Showtime, if you're Neeb, you usually beat everyone else. Like you usually beat everyone else in the late game, but you don't beat Serral in the. So you, you see what I'm saying? Like, like I feel like that kind of boosts him um, considerably in that realm. I mean, I like, don't really care how he gets to that high of a win record, mm -hmm. though. Like the, the point was because. The reason I brought up Artosis was that Artosis, when he heard that, literally said, well, there's a problem with the matchup, if mm -hmm. that is true, which it was. Um, I... And, you know, I heard that and I, I never really considered that before, but it kind of is. And, you know, Kat saying that he, he loses to gimmicky stuff every once in a while does not make me, does not but deter Protoss my point, I feel like. Is, oh, yeah, yeah 100%. Is kind of gimmicky, yeah. No, no, th this is not going back to the player discussion, I guess, which is maybe some confusion. This is going back to the race design discussion. Mm. Which is that it does feel like of all of the races, Protoss is the one that people can be the best against, um, like mm. the, the extreme best against. Whereas, you know, the ZVTs mm. and the ZVZs obviously are a lot more convoluted or the TVZs and the TVTs. A more volatile, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I just I thought that was an interesting point. You know, he, he has sometimes tasteless anartosis have a way of just saying a statement that makes you reconsider all the doubts that you've ever had about making the same statement. Mm -hmm. But as soon as he said that, I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe that is a point against Protoss. Is on point. Case of what's, the best late game player ever, though. I think. What's yeah. uh, what's Serral's win rate versus Terran during that time? Probably also stupid, eighty percent something. Because that's sorry, that's a that's a big question too, uh, especially when you have to consider that there's so many more mid level Protosses that he kind of beats up on yeah, mostly. That's a big point, uh, especially in EU, and then also any losses that he suffers versus Terran are probably going to be versus, like, Clem and, like, Hero Marine once. Serral really only plays yeah. in some of the high-quality tournaments, though. Like, so, it's not like he's stopping the Open Cup Protoss all the time. That's true, that's true. That's a very good point. It's Serral. In the, in the last three years, right, so a little bit different, but since January 1st, 2020, Serral's ZVT has been about, has been 75%. Mm-hmm. In maps and his ZVP has been 79%. His ZVZ is 65%. You know, that's mm, always been a weak it's point. It's fine then. A 4% difference. That's not that. <laughs> yeah. that like that, that it, to, to me, that's kind of within the same realm of oh, possibility. Shit. The same realm of the guy's just too good. Yeah. He's yeah. I, ridiculous. Yeah. So um, I, I can't do this off the top of my head, but I would love to see kind of last five years win rates taking out Rainer, Serral, and Maru. That would be ah, that would be interesting. I and feel this like is, that is why Serral is truly the goat. Maybe no. why would you do that? Maybe <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like we're trying to close out the show. Huh? We bring this huh? in. There. <clears throat> no, that's fine. I agree, though. But also, ZG counterpoint. You're talking about like if this is possible, maybe that's a problem. I mean, Flash is a counterpoint, or any of the Bonjois of Brood War, where. They just, they had insane win rates, and that's no, just because that's, they're that good. that's very hard to compare to, because the dynamic of the tournament structure was so different. Um, you did not have Flash participate in nearly as many stupidly small tournaments as Serral even has, and Serral doesn't participate in too many. Mm. But the, the, the amount of tournaments and the amount of high competition level that happens in StarCraft II is, is unmatched in Brood War. Okay, fair enough. Um, it, you know, but, it, you know, in... in you could argue then that's even more impressive for Flash, of course. Yeah, to some degree. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, he's, yeah. he's, he's only playing, playing, yeah. the, he's he's only playing the best of the best. Of the crap, yeah. But you could also then just easily pivot this conversation to, well, Brood War is a much more balanced game. I don't know about that. I think Brood War is just more um, stable to where it doesn't actually change, so it rewards people to who oh, have it done the same. changes. Map-wise, it changes a little bit. But no, I mean, like, the metas have also changed about every two years, I would say. Yeah, but fundamentally, you don't have to relearn anything. Like I, like, I feel like, especially when you're Flash, like, you would have been setting the meta according to what oh, your sure. fingerprint is and stuff like that, and like deciding yeah. whether you want more macro or more micro-focused games and shit like that. So I, I just feel like if you're Flash, you can just work on yourself time and time again, and the game never shifted on you 
to where you can actually create more distance in a game like in a game like Brood War because yeah. sure sure it doesn't change that much but in, in that sense like after all these many patches and it's like these players are still very good against protosses protoss is still weaker yeah that's uh um, again yeah, points it, to a design issue in my opinion yeah for sure i agree <clears throat> it is it has definitely been a design issue i do think i do think that the most recent version of the patch even with banelings, you know, still plus, uh, still plus two banelings, like one shotting pros. I think this is the closest we've been for a while, specifically in PVZ. Um, but obviously, I think PVT is, and this is why, like, you know, we have the Raven change, we have all this other stuff we're talking about. Um, I think those, that that's a matchup that's been really troubling because, like, mm -hmm. Classic beat that's Rainer nice. and Serral at Gamers Eight and mm -hmm. Maru, by the way, and then. Uh, oh, sorry, beyond, beyond, beyond. I was like, I'm what? Mar no, he didn't. <laughs> uh, Maru, yeah, Maru went out 3060 or 3061. No, wait, did he? I don't remember. Maru, um, it was Maru and Classic, but they were the first two out. Yeah, yeah, because Serral was the, yeah, Serral was like expected to go at first. Uh, but then he got beaten by Cure, like 3-1. Yeah. Um, and classic. and part, of, part of that issue, I think, was that it feels like Classic spent a shit ton of time preparing specifically <laughs> for PBZ. And making it really, really like he his PVZ is some of the best I've ever seen at that tournament. Like across the board, uh, obviously he made some mistakes, especially in game two versus Errol, where he was like, "I have a, a billion dollars in the bank, and I would like to invest in more banks to put my money into." And then he never Holy opened die. the banks. Um, but then versus Cure, it, it felt like maybe he didn't prepare as much the way he did for versus Terran. And it, it feels like it's a very different set of preparations, which comes back to like, Protoss is just really hard to play at the absolute top level, but like for another different reason. Now, one thing we do have to point out here is that we talk about most recent changes. I'd actually argue that the patch before our current patch was probably the best one we've had in a long time. Again, with how good hero, like the hero PVZ style was and everything. Um, that was, but, that was, that's a good example, though, of like, if this guy doesn't come back from the military, that never exists. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, but I'm talking mm. like, yeah, we were always, we, we never have our full complement of top Protosses, and we really, uh, until Rogue went to military, have had all the Zergs and all the Terrans for the most part. Uh, mm. Point, though, I want to make here is that the balance patch is dropping now, which is, you know, even when it comes out, it's going to be a month or two before ESL Masters Online, and then four months that's before exciting. whatever. More importantly, it's not dropping a month before the World Championship. Mm, that is yes. good right thing. that yeah. is okay. i i mean i would have been fine if the last like I, I really wanted the last patch to drop after the world Champ. if we're gonna do it like this and we're gonna have a very few balance patches we should be dropping it after every single like after the world championship that's our window that's people's time off you get ready for the spring tournaments whatever that's how and like this is not quite yeah. there but obviously things take time the fact that we are doing this and giving it time to marinate in the meta for more than like two weeks is it's such okay. a big deal. It's huge, mm. yeah. It's also it's so huge. easy to do the patch. in an esports scene where there's like three big tournaments in the year. This is also true. We don't like have the to bar has not been high about you know timing these patches in StarCraft, and yet they've missed the mark occasionally. But you're right. It's better that they do it now, and it's better, of course, that they're doing a patch test, and a lot of these things will change. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. They might have even almost done the intentional like changing so many things to draw back later making something overpowered to draw back later like yeah. these are common approaches with, you know. um <clears throat> yeah so and then i will add the like asterisks like thing here that i i kind of rebuked someone bringing up um these are uh free uh, free work like they, they do not get paid for what they're doing mm -hmm. um and they are just trying to do their best with you know as much uh, or as least amount of bias as possible because they are also playing these races and I'm sure everyone deserves a you know round of applause and all that. Yeah. Um, but if Blizzard did tell them to stay anonymous in this, Blizzard did a really good job. 100% they should be anonymous, not just because of like potential um, targeted uh, mm -hmm. angry, uh, anger, anger, but also because then it makes these conversations so much easier. I'm not mm -hmm. yelling at Harstam by saying that you know the cyclone change is fucking stupid i'm yelling at voice, yeah. everyone a little bit or theoretically no one because it's a amalgamation or whatever it's a, yeah and there's like some organizational structure <laughs> internally but every pro effectively has a voice has channels to get you know their their voice heard can discuss with everyone their own race like it's 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 a really good 
environment I think is structured well and ultimately everyone has input. That's good. And again, Harson was even really actively involved in this patch, so he's just a famous example. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> so wait, who do we who do we hate this? Like last patch, it was everyone hated Scarlet. That's true. Um, um, who do we hate this time? I mean, she's she's here, so you know, <laughs> so we don't talk behind someone's back. We'll just blame her again. Okay, fair enough. Scarlet's the reason that Protoss uh, after the patch is going to have a twenty five percent win rate. Thanks, Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> love you long time <laughs> i actually saw some people bringing up like whether or not pros should be the one balancing and i don't uh i don't agree with them um, the the Who comments and would this. do it yeah like it's just very yeah. difficult for anyone else to take on the mantle because then they'll break the game for pros like if, if we have community balancing it it doesn't work if you want designers it costs money um mm. and yeah pros are you know very capable very aware of what's going on so it's not always going to be the most elegant i think a lot a lot of our qualms with this patch are like, those are a big unit, and you're killing the, the, you know, but that's the kind of shit that pros just wouldn't give a fuck about, right? Like, it's, so, so it, it, it makes sense. And for gameplay, I think they're doing a very good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, then. Um, we were going to assess maps, but it's already been a very long um, show. So I think maps will have to wait. Maybe we'll do another one before they're even live. So I'm not really all that concerned for it. Other than... Uh, You'll have uh, five hours tomorrow. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's also some other things, like someone you know, pointing out like the map maker changes in the Reddit thread that I also would have wanted to go after, uh, go over. Uh, the Chinese community balance suggestions? That, no. I don't know if you saw that. Well, that one also would have been interesting, sure, but I was talking about the Omni-Skeptic reply about... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, technical hum mumbo jumbo but that's gonna be it for the show i believe guys it's already been uh about five hours so <laughs> thank you very much to my uh guests for coming on for this long give me their input hope everyone had a fun time and thank you for the subs and the raids and all the good stuff and the interaction from the chat wait can i plug zero space real quick sure go ahead thank you if you guys would please uh follow us on uh on the steam wish list it would be very appreciated uh, zero space there and check out kickstarter for all the information and that's it i hope you enjoy the game that was it awesome uh steadfast where are you gonna be what are you doing um i'd like to announce that i am also creating my own rts <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just kidding um it's a real -time sandwich. yeah i'm just gonna be streaming masters coliseum again tomorrow uh i did it for like six hours this morning and then came straight on here uh I, yeah check out my youtube i don't know check out my twitch i don't know is masters coliseum uh, happening tomorrow i thought it was like the two days out of the week for four weeks or something weird no they're doing eight days straight because they're psychopaths oh weird uh, i i totally misread the schedule then and i'm Oops. gonna cover six of those days because i'm equally crazy uh <laughs> yeah that's yeah that's it i don't know follow this channel follow mine cool and bam off yeah um, I will also be doing Master's Coliseum tonight, though. Not not like when Steadfast gets up early for it. We do it for North American Times, twitch.tv slash Uh I'm not going to be able to do all of it because unlike Steadfast, I'm not psychopathic. Um, maybe. We'll have to ask my parents about that one. But yeah, uh, check out my YouTube as well for... Sorry? Your parents? What would they know about you? Uh, they probably have a better insight of whether I'm psychopathic I than see, I do. I see, I see, I see. Interesting. Um, I don't know. Ask my brother, ask my girlfriend. <laughs> Um, regardless, and uh, if you want up to date Stormgate news, really, you should check out Stormgate Nexus. Uh, we're hoping to have some zero space coverage. I don't know if it's going to fit or how we're going to do that, but anyways, uh, that's going to happen. And check out my YouTube for the visual form of all that. So, youtube.com slash Beowulf, twitch.tv slash Beowulf, Stormgate Nexus.com. There we go. Cool. And you guys are on so, my channel, so follow my channel. Damn it. Exactly. I was about to say zombie grub was to follow you. Uh, <laughs> Let Kitty say goodbye. Um, Apollo. I don't know where my cat's went. <laughs> Shout out to Zombie Grub's cat. Uh, could be anywhere right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, a dog would, would have showed up right away. I'm just I, I can do some cat treats <laughs> after you guys are gone, I guess. So uh, thank you, panelists, once again. And um, Thank you, guys. Yeah, have a good day, y'all. Bye. Bye. And then uh, I'll just do, I don't know, this one. I don't have a single on this on the scene collection, so I guess we'll just